to be in the back of the net. Yes! Gunner, it is a Get brilliant it. goal. Ball goes down and the referee says that is a penalty. Oh, and he's missed it, it's hit the post. Straight in the net. Well, it's gone straight into the goal. Ball goes across field and into the back of the net. And it's an equaliser for the Navy. Touched onto yes, the bar and he yes. did. Come on! Shoots, sends the keeper the wrong way. Hello and welcome to Fratton Park in Portsmouth for week two of Inter-Services Football. I'm Kath Brazier and tonight we're bringing you the Royal Navy men against the Army men. Now, will the senior service take inspiration from their female counterparts' 1-0 win last night or are the Army here to run riot on the south coast? Just like yesterday, it's a must-win showdown after the tournament opener ended with an RAF win. Oh, he's oh, caught it in position. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Really big mistake. And the Army take the lead. It's Jamie Turner, the former Manchester United youth player. Corner for the Army then, whipped in. Towards the near post, he's headed on. And he to the back Two of the nil. net. The Army have a second. And it's Lewis Simmons who was waiting, prowling at the back. Cross in towards the near post, he's flicked on, he's a chance at the back, and he's Campbell in. does get his goal. Strike oh, for save and Devin Devin there. in, and it's 2-2 on the stroke of half time. The RAF are absolutely triumphant. It's Michael Campbell. Oh, it's 3-2. And the RAF bench goes wild. And the RAF have completed the turnaround, a performance, a comeback of champions. The Royal Air Force then laying down the gauntlet, but when we spoke to the Navy and Army camps, neither of them are backing down. We're here to, to win it from the first season out. That's, that's the idea of it. I think that's everybody's um, intent in the playing staff as well as the management staff. Certainly why I've come in to, um, to do the job. So um, obviously against two highly competitive, talented opposition. So there's no givens, but certainly we're in it to um, give it our absolute best crack at winning it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, really good. Um, obviously a new backroom staff that he's brought in with him, paying attention to the finer details. We spend a, a lot of time on the intricacies of the game, which is, I think has just has brought us on a little bit from last year. We were in a great place last year, didn't deliver. Um, I just these little tweaks that he's made and just looking to things under a microscope will, will stand us in good stead. Yeah, in terms of preparation, it's been amazing. Um, we haven't had to play that many friendlies. We normally would throughout the year, but we've done we've done quite well in the competitions. We're still in one. We've played some high-class opposition, so we've had a real good mixture of opposition, um, and we've, we've had a, a good test. We've had a chance to, to put to practice what we've been doing on the training pitch. So the Navy haven't won the Inter-Services since 2016. Is 2024 going to be your year? We'll see. Um, we've got, obviously, two big games to go ahead. We are confident. The boys are confident, so we will give it our absolute best shot and um, yeah, hopefully we will be able to um, get that trophy back to, uh, to, to HS Temeray and we'll give it our absolute best shot for sure. Army, we're blessed we've got our uh, individuals that sort of give us that extra bit of flair well we're, we're not just tipping up to make the numbers um, you know we're here to win we're here to compete and we'll we'll be ready and uh, we'll roll our sleeves up and we'll get ready to go to war 
shoots, sends the keeper the wrong way. Great, great Army numbers. two, our Royal Navy nil. Oh, and it's a chance for a, a third for the Army, and he's not going to miss that, is he? Scott McCarthy. Towards the near post, he's headed on, and he to the back Two of the nil. net. You've been around the scene for a while, so what's it like to, to test yourselves against the other two services? Uh, it's good to be fair, it's a good um, team that we've got, obviously playing core throughout the year to, to come together uh, as players. We've got a few knocks, um, but yes, it's the best time of year for obviously in the services football. You've only got two games, two finals if you like, so how do you prepare players for, for what is effectively a very small tournament? You know, outside, you know, you've got FA Cup, you, you might have a cup run, or, or in the league, you, you've got several games to get going this, you, you've got to hit the ground running. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Um, two games, uh, you, can, you can have all the results and games you like in the build-up and the preparation, but it, it comes down to, you know, well, it'll come down to Wednesday evening and, uh, you know, who, who comes out best. Fighting talk then from both sides. So let's see what they can do on the pitch. It's time for the football. Let's join our commentary team for tonight, led by John Knighton. Kath, thanks very much indeed. And a very warm welcome to Fratton Park, where just last night, Portsmouth flying high at the top of League One, and it seems championship bound, uh, beat Burton Albion 2-1 on this very pitch here. Uh, close match, actually, much closer than maybe the Pompey fans thought it was going to be. But to the ground staff here have done a brilliant job preparing the pitch for tonight's battle. And of course, it's always guaranteed to be a battle, isn't it, when the army come to Pompey to meet the Royal Navy. The army probably still wondering how on earth they let a two-goal lead slip inside a couple of minutes just before half-time and then go on to lose to a resurgent RAF team who... Uh, well, uh, in terms of possession, the RAF probably had the game and probably deserved to win it in the end, but it was pretty close, actually. For Chris James, taking charge for his first Royal Navy senior inter-services match, uh, he'll have the chance to see what his charges are up against, and he knows a win tonight will set up for basically an inter-services final next week at Shrewsbury, but uh, they have a job to do tonight. As far as the teams are concerned, well, both teams, everything to play for, as we say. As far as the Army are concerned, well, Jimmy Blair, their head coach, has named the same starting lineup, uh, starting 11, I should say, uh, that took to the field against the, uh, the RAF last week. And uh, he's going to rely on his experience because on the bench, all of the players, uh, except for Jordan Brooks, are very much newcomers uh, playing their first inter-services season this year. So he's going to rely on people like Matty Evans at number four in midfield. He 11th years, 11 years with uh, the Army team. Centre-back Andy Matthews, sixth season with them. Sean Thompson in the sixth season wearing number eight tonight. And Greg Peel up front. And also, of course, keeper Luke Kearney, who is captaining the side this evening. As far as the Royal Navy are concerned, well, they have a huge pedigree in their lineup, and uh, no less than four inter services or four combined services UCAF players who won the Kentish Cup are lining up for the Royal Navy this evening. Uh, at left back is Jack Wright, who came straight into uh, the lineup last season for the Navy, and indeed straight into UCAF as well. Great defender. Uh, Rhys Thomas at number six, with Elliot Holmes at number eight, and Danny Kerr, of course, the captain at number 10, the ubiquitous captain for Royal Navy football. So there we are set for a terrific battle tonight between these two teams and it really is going to be a great game. My pleasure to welcome this evening the uh, RAF head coach Andy Kutcher who is uh, joining me this evening as co-commentator as well of course as a watching brief uh, for, for your sides. Andy, I know that uh, you're hoping probably secretly, and you're not going to say this publicly, I know that the Royal Navy will drop some points tonight, or at least drop one point, uh, but uh, we're looking forward to a great game between two teams who know how to play good football. Yeah, absolutely, and firstly, uh, thank you for the invite for the co-commentary uh, as ever, John. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Big occasion, big uh, big game, obviously, like you've alluded to, a uh, bit of a spying mission as well, so um, uh, the Army did a did a fantastic job uh, being very extremely competitive with us last week. Um, so very interested into what the what our next opposition is about, which is uh, the Royal Navy. Well, I was going to say actually, you know, in terms of the RAF, what on earth happened? Two goals down, and then uh, you pulled it back to two all, but just before half time and recovered well to win three two in the end. 
Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it just showed where, where we are as a team and as uh, as a group of players how resilient the lads pulled it. You know that we know we didn't play at our best for the first sort of 20, 25 minutes, but um, and gave gave ourselves a mountain to climb. But um, you know the army came with a, a, an excellent game plan, made it very difficult to us. But uh, you know. Well, luckily, we uh, we turned it around, and uh, uh, the boys proved why uh, we're currently in service champions. Well, at the moment, the players just being introduced uh, to the second sea lord, Vice uh, Admiral Martin Connell, who, of course, uh, so uh, proactive with uh, Royal Navy football, and he uh, presented obviously a trophy last night to uh, the uh, Royal Navy women after they beat the Army 1-0 in a fairly close fort match over there at Haventon Waterlooville, not too far away. So just being introduced at the moment uh, are the dignitaries uh, to the, uh, the the players. Uh, officiating this evening, by the way, all from the Royal Air Force tonight, uh, Sergeant Chris Arnell will be uh, a man in the middle tonight, and his assistant referees, Flight Lieutenant Richard Graves and Flight Sergeant Steve Monks uh, with the fourth official tonight, Flight Lieutenant Martin Mitchell. He'll be obviously using the... Uh, the, the, the numbers board to tell us if there are any substitutions or any changes being made. And I should say as well that uh, uh, in the last few minutes, actually, a presentation has been made happening in the boardroom just below where our commentary position is. 16 golden caps have been presented to men and some of the families of the 21 Royal Navy players who have made a century or more appearances for the senior service since the Royal Navy Football Association was founded back in 1904. We hope to be talking to one of them at half time at least i'm hoping that uh, gibraltar dave dave wilson will be joining us at half time to tell us about that uh, but uh, they are all in the uh, the uh, certainly in the uh, the vips in the <clears throat> uh, in the director's box tonight uh, it's absolutely packed and it's uh, great andy to see so many people here at fratton park this evening yeah absolutely it's um, you know just looking to my right and left of uh, our commentary position and uh, you know to uh, to have such a prestigious stadium as uh, as fratton park and to to see uh, you know more or less this, this this the stand that we're in full of full of personnel what what credit to service football so it's time for the national anthem then here the home of the royal navy in Portsmouth. So we have a terrific atmosphere here inside Fratton Park tonight for the second night running, really. It was a great atmosphere last night for the League One clash uh, with the Pompey chimes ringing around. Of course, quite a few of the fans have uh, taken the seats in the stand here that they might not normally take in the main stand here to enjoy this game this evening. But uh, we are looking forward to a cracking contest as well. And I think... Uh, and it's going to be pretty tight tonight because uh, if the army play the way that they played against you, there won't be too many chances. But the uh, the navy obviously will be uh, out to exploit whatever they can. Yeah, the uh, the army uh, went a little bit direct, which um, you know, in my opinion, you, we look at the size and certainly with uh, with Andrew Matthews, you know, he's like the Holland Glo Globe Trotters, so he, he causes you a problem from uh, the ball being direct and uh, set pieces. So uh, it'll be interesting how the Na how the Navy uh, uh, sort of try and combat him. Um, again, on the Navy side, you know, they they look a technical outfit. We know their players; they've got some really really technically gifted players. So I expect them to get, try and get the ball down on this uh, immaculate surface. 
Yeah, I mean, we should just pay, you know, once again, pay tribute to the amazing uh, pitch tonight. Bearing in mind how much rain they had in Portsmouth yesterday, it is quite astonishing. Uh, and obviously the game that was played last night, but uh, the ground staff here at Fratton Park have done a, a fantastic job to, uh, to get the pitch in absolutely tip-top condition for us this evening for a game to pay tribute, obviously, to service football at its very, very best. And obviously, as ever, wherever you are around the world tonight, we'd love to hear where you are watching us, uh, live on our YouTube channel and, of course, also on Facebook tonight. We'll try and mention as many of you as we possibly can this evening. Just uh, waiting for then uh, for the uh, officials to uh, sort out who's going to do what. And uh, it is uh, Craig Stevenson who's there with uh, also with uh, Luke Kearney who has assumed the captain's armband this evening for the army. So, just about ready to go, I think. The army just having their obligatory uh, Instagram uh, photo. Yeah, yes, it'll be piped all around the world, of course, uh, as with all the photos. And uh, Janice Cuppin says, "Good luck to both teams. I support you all." Keith Lamb is that is that at Temeraire? No, Keith. We are here at the home of Portsmouth FC tonight at Fratton Park. Uh, Danny Jackson says, "Good luck to both teams. Happy 60th for last week, Cookie." <laughs> <laughs> you see, you don't get away with anything here, do no, you? Absolutely. You absolutely don't. Danny Jackson says, "Yeah, definitely Fratton Park." And Phil Bright is watching as well. You've got, I'm sure, half of the most of your RAF uh, squad are watching tonight as well. Yeah, I hope all, hope all of them are watching. Yeah. Do, doing their own bits of... Uh, homework. <laughs> homework, absolutely. Looks like the uh, army have set up to overload here on the uh, left-hand side, straight from the kickoff. Yeah, uh, it does. It, so it'll be interesting uh, what their new set-piece routine is. It will. Yeah, Jimmy Blair been working on an awful lot this week. And away we go then for this inter-services clash between the Royal Navy and the British Army. And we've already got a great atmosphere here. Sean Thompson decides to uh, play it safe back to his goalkeeper early, to Luke Carney. There's that distribution from Luke that, uh, you know, he's renowned for. He's got a great left peg, and I think that could be uh, a really good ploy for uh, for the Army because, uh, by the way, the looks of the uh, Navy quickly, as they've set up with a back three in there. Well, the Army, of course, have got to go for it, having lost that uh, having lost that first game. They really have got to go for it uh, tonight and uh, get a win if they can to keep them in the competition ahead of the the final showdown at uh, Shrewsbury Town next week. Uh, the Navy going wide onto that left-hand side. Nicely controlled Here's in Elliot there. Holmes. Holmes gets it back again. Early possession then for the Navy with Pete Bradley. Cut out by Callum Cox. He's uh, one of the newcomers this season in the inter-services team for the senior army side. One of the uh, the only starter as a newcomer tonight, but there are lots of people on the bench maybe hoping to get their chance this evening. Army, army started uh, nice and brightly, just trying to turn the Navy, but um, keeping quite a high line. Yeah, Cox with that uh, ball down the field. It's going to run harmlessly out of play, the first goal kick of the night John Douglas good evening from Musselburgh come on the army he says watching on Facebook tonight and lots of you also tuning in on our YouTube channel this evening say so wherever you are around the world great to have you along with us on our forces news live stream tonight Navy playing themselves out from the back yeah, nicely done nicely done It's Bradley that ends up with a, a red shirt. 
And again, looking for safety, getting uh, Luke Kearney into the game. Made some terrific saves last week against the RAF, which uh, presented, prevented the score being uh, even higher. That's that's a ball gone. Has out gone out of play. Yeah. yeah. Throwing then to the army with uh, Clay Bryant here, taking this from one CS Battalion, his fourth year, place for Winterton Rangers up there in South Humberside. Yeah, that's, that's a great tackle there, but Peely done really well there to hold the ball up, so uh, did really well. Comes back to Bryant, nicely done, back to Stevenson. Army looking for some possession here at the moment and uh, certainly overrunning the Navy in these early moments of the game. Yeah, I think they're just pressing really well with loads of energy. Um, something that they did to us last week in the first first half. Um, started really brightly, lots of energy, pressing high. And uh, just that first first ten minutes while the uh, both of the game settled down. Well, this is what Jimmy will have uh, really got into his players. The need to press right from the start. Chris James, of course, in his first full match as the head coach of the senior team great success at the under 23 level and there's no surprise that a few of his under 23 charges have made it into the senior team nice work from the army defense won't want to make any mistakes here's Bryant challenged by Danny Kerr there yeah tenacious that's what you're going to get from Danny Oh, that's a great header. It's a free kick, but it's a great advantage. Oh, Lee oh well done, referee, because yeah. I thought he was going to play the advantage there, but uh, it was a foul. Well, there was no advantage in the no, end, was there? So, no, absolutely. Uh, so Chris Arnell just lets play go and then brings it back for the free kick, quite rightly. George Emmett is watching from Portsmouth, so hopefully the Navy win, says George tonight, watching on Facebook and Jack Ayres. Such a shame Scotty McCarthy was... Here's that set Not piece. playing, he would have dominated the inter-services for years. Here's that set piece <laughs> we were talking about, John, potentially. Look, Archie Ma uh, Oh, it's a great oh. disguise, to be fair. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, Lee Phillips uh, couldn't make the most of that, going wide on this left-hand side for the Army. But uh, interesting already from the Army, just trying a few different uh, yeah. ploys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we sucked us all in, thinking that they were going to... Luke was going to ping it ping it long for, uh, for Andrew Matthews there as the target but uh, he started to slip a little one down the side Army dominating possession so far in this game but so far neither keeper has had anything to test them nil nil we've played just five and a half minutes here at Fratton Park that great to be at this stadium tonight Here's Dave Vincent. Army bring it clear though. Peely. Nicely Peely well. across field and using uh, Clay Bryant straight away, but uh, well cut out by Reese Thomas there. Again, the right oh, back, well uh, Mark Drysdale, who's. Uh, He's been around for a few years in uh, in Navy football, knows his way around this pitch particularly well. Yeah. Here's Thomas. Goes back to Jack Wright, who we're used to seeing as a central defender, really, for UCAF. And uh, if uh, the Navy get any sort of set piece, then he's going to be a real danger. He's scored so many headed goals already for the under-23s and indeed for UCAF. Dangerous ball through into the box, but well played by the Navy. Though they're trying to play through the thirds, and Danny's uh, Danny Kerr there just getting on the ball and trying to play that slide ball down the side. There's that direct ball in behind the fullback. Lawrence McCormick gets the ball well cleared, and Thomas going up for it and in the end Stevenson. Craig Stevenson elects for safety yeah and clears his lines 
First 10 minutes, don't do anything silly. We learned that last week. Yeah, I mean, uh, the RF did give away uh, the first goal, didn't they, quite cheaply? And must yeah. have given you uh, palpitations on the touchline there. Yeah, but, and, uh, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, uh, we, you know, football's all about mistakes. It's how you react them. So uh, Shot comes in. And it was Danny Kerr. Now, every time we have our BFBS cameras anywhere near Danny Kerr, he's going to go for goal. He scored two crackers for UCAF in that 5-2 victory over the Dutch over there in France in December. And uh, he's not afraid to have a go for it, is he? No, no, not at all. And like you say, he, uh, he had great technique uh, in the game against uh, the French and scored a, scored a couple of worldies. Um, it's not something that Danny's renowned for, sc scoring lots of goals, but, um, you know... <laughs> He's, uh, he's certainly coming to the fore in the last couple of months. Well, his uh, teammates were reminding him of that. He's challenging with uh, Clay Bryant and he wins it. Slips over, but recovers. Oh, well Bryant done. wins, eventually yeah. wins the battle, but uh, and indeed wins a free kick, which the army take very quickly. Well Evans, good through ball. Yeah, it's brilliant to Lee Phillips. Brilliant from Danny there, and then really, really well recovered from Claire Bryant there. You can see it? how competitive this game is yeah, already. Another great tackle. Yeah, great tackle from uh, Bryant. Anybody watching up in Winterton this evening? Little village not too far out of Scunthorpe in North Lincolnshire. That's where Danny plies his trade with Winterton Rangers. One of the first games I ever covered of Winterton Rangers back in the day. <laughs> And I can absolutely oh, okay. assure you that uh, Clay was not playing on that occasion. Free kick then to the Navy, which is going to be taken quickly, or not quickly, I should say. Mark Drysdale just uh, taking his time. In fact, he's going to leave it in the end. For yeah, that's Pete Bradley coming across, isn't it, to, yeah. uh, to take it? Yeah, N oh, no, David, sorry, David, Vincent. David Vincent. Yeah, Dave Vincent coming over to take it. Floated high, looking maybe for... Uh, for Jack Wright on the end of it. As I say, he's anything going into the penalty area with any height on it, and Jack Wright is going to be there, but it's a, a chance a on the break. Ooh, well done. Well, well Goalkeeper done. did well really done. well, Lawrence McCormack. Yeah, did really well there, read it well. Great starting position, good high line. Yeah, Loz, base at RMB Chivener. They're all at Marines base down there. Multi-talented athlete, it says in the notes. And he showed his athletic prowess there. Nil-nil though, ten minutes gone in this inter-services fixture. The Royal Navy against the British Army. Sean Powell then to take the throw on that far side of the field and north stand side, if you know Fratton Park. And it's well collected by Elliot Holmes into the box, takes the shot yeah. and scores! Well, all he needed was a little bit of space just on the edge of the penalty area and straight into the goal. That's a brilliant effort from Elliot Holmes. And he put the Navy 1-0 up. Great finish there. Great finish from Elliot. Uh, that's what he's good at, you know, great strike. Well, it really was. He just spotted a bit of room bit of space just on the edge of the penalty area stepped up dropped his shoulder and bash into the back of the net nothing that Luke Kearney could do about that no. at all it really was he just spotted the room and went for it on the edge of the penalty area and he's put the Navy 1-0 ahead after just 11 minutes wow terrific goal James Roberts is watching. Shelley Derbyshire as well. Ash Coates is watching from the Royal Navy rugby setup down there. Maybe they're all down in uh, Cornwall tonight watching down at uh, HMS Rally. Once again, the Navy pressing. Danny Kerr shoved off it in the end, fairly by Andy Matthews, and it goes out for a goal kick. Well, that's certainly livened things up, hasn't it? It was a great goal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely great goal there and, uh, you know, thoroughly deserved. They, they look a little bit brighter. Army just looked a little bit uh, starstruck by uh, what's going on in the minute. But, um, you know, they just need to settle down. Just need to settle down and get back in the game. It's delighted all the home fans here. 
many of whom would have been here last night, of course, cheering on the senior service here. The Army with it all to do, trailing 1-0, and it was a great goal from Elliot Holmes. A little bit of uh, connection there. And we usually have a little bit of... Uh, remember, the boxing lads is next week, it's not tonight. The boxing championship is uh, next Wednesday. But uh, obviously, the Navy players did not agree with that challenge that went in, and they're making their feelings known. Yeah, not quite sure what happened there. Was it? Uh... It was obviously a challenge that went up, and I think it was Greg Peel who went in just a little bit heavy, and the referee, Chris Arnell, is taking his name. A yellow card then goes for. Greg Peel. Greg Peel, yeah. yeah. First name in the book. What's that, 11, uh, 12 minutes in? So, uh, you know, he's going to have to be uh, a little bit careful, careful in, in how he applies himself uh, now challenging, challenging in the air. Uh, it, was a, it was clearly a hefty challenge on a player who doesn't fall down lightly, Pete Bradley. And still some conversations going on. It looks like another name is being taken here as well, maybe for the argument that ensued afterwards. The yellow card is being shown uh, Two more to yellow cards. the <laughs> Navy, uh, the Navy's Reese Thomas, and also I think uh, one has has been shown there as well to it's Jamie Turner. Yeah, there, Jamie Turner has yeah. been shown a yellow too. So Reese Thomas goes into the book. So three cards issued there. I think good refereeing as well from Chris Arnell, just making sure that we don't have too much of that going on. So, say the in services boxing is next Wednesday. Coming inside with coinciding with, of course, the the final match in the uh, inter services football at Shrewsbury. At the moment, the Navy in leading. Danny Kerr puts the through ball through, just a little bit too far for Elliot Holmes. And Luke Kenny quickly off his line to cut out any further trouble. Good fair challenge between uh, between the two of them there, you know, Mark Drysdale and, uh, and Jamie, Jamie Turner. Turner. There, so. Yeah. Interception, chase on then from Alan Snedden, and he's won it. And fairly says the referee. Elliot Holmes then, just setting himself up here, plays the ball back eventually, the Navy just dominating at the moment, they've got this 1-0 lead, clearly enjoying it. Yeah, just a little bit, I think they've settled a little bit more, um, settled a little bit quicker than the, the, the Army, just knocking the ball around nicely now, big pitch, you know, it suits their style and their technical players. Ball goes out of play in the end, from Mark him. Drysdale. Army will have the throw. Clay Bryant to take it. Matthews back to his goalkeeper. Yeah, just needs to calm it down a little bit. Just uh, try and regain the ball, have a little bit of possession. It's great distribution. Carleen Cole says, hoping for a win from the Army. Jack Maunders' nephew, Harley, sends good luck. Uh, wishing him well live from Southampton and uh, Jack actually on the bench tonight for the Army. Maybe we'll see him later. That's a great ball. This is a good ball, but it's just a little bit too far. A little bit too far for Callum Cox to uh, collect. Yeah, but it was a great switch of play. Opened up, the overlap came in from the fullback and it was uh, it was uh, uh, just uh, a little bit too, far, too, too over hit for him, but uh, great ball, great vision. Goal kick then to the Navy. They've been playing more than a quarter of an hour, not a corner for either team just yeah. yet. But we do have a goal, and it was Callum Vincent, to, or rather Elliot, I should say, Elliot Holmes, who scored the goal for the Royal Navy to put them 1 0 up here. If you've just joined us live on Forces News Facebook and also, of course, on our YouTube channel. Martin Barrett says, great finish. Absolutely right, Martin.
free kick goes in. Well claimed. Really good goalkeeping that. Just takes the pressure off your team, doesn't it? Just yeah. uh, come and claim it, nice and confident. One goalkeeper to another, yeah, Lars McCormack absolutely. claiming it. Not often you see that these days. No. Lee Phillips. Does well there, beats off the challenge from uh, Manny Roche. One of the two Roche brothers who are in the squad tonight. Sol is wearing number 12, he's on the bench by the way, be interesting to see if both of the brothers come on and play together. Can't have had too many uh, brothers uh, playing together in the Royal Navy team over the years. No, no. And just looking around in the main stand here, it really is pretty busy. Where you're watching, obviously you won't be able to see too many fans on the far side of the field, but this main stand here is well populated tonight, so it's a yeah, really good turnout. Absolutely, and uh, you know, I was chatting to uh, to Hells before the game, and uh, she was saying on the on the social media platforms around 1,600 tickets were sold. So you know, uh, that's a great effort from the people of Portsmouth and the, yeah. the surrounding areas, and obviously family and friends to uh, to come out and support service football like this. Brilliant, it is. Liberty Laurie hoping for a Royal Navy win to the most handsome man on the pitch, my brother Danny Kerr. Good luck. And uh, she sends lots of love. And of course, the players will watch this later on, so they'll see these messages uh, when they watch the game uh, later on. Navy, though, have the ball. With Reese Thomas. Into the middle of the pitch. Goes wide onto that left hand side. It's Danny Kerr. Seems to be everywhere at the moment. Trying to put a low cross in, but it's intercepted by Lewis Simmons. Navy build again, though. Here's Wright. Got an overload on this back post if they see it. He's offside. Oh, well, thought he was offside there. The, the flag one. hasn't gone up. He put, but, his, uh, put his flag up and then put it straight back down. So Here's Drysdale. Out to Roche. Comes back inside again. Look for Thomas. And here's Jack Wright. Alex to uh, take it back to his goalkeeper and the uh, Navy will try once more this time with Drysdale. Happy just to play the ball. Yeah. Interesting talking to Chris James earlier, he was saying that the Navy playing a possession-based game and you can see that's coming into this now. They've got the lead. Playing the ball very nicely around. This is not the sort of traditional sort of military football that maybe we've seen over the last few years, Andy. Things changing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's nice to see, you know, it's playing the right way and enjoying the ball. Certainly we've tried to change our philosophy over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, it's nice to see the Navy sort of half following suit now and, you know, getting the ball down and playing. It's great. But, you know, the surfaces make a massive difference. Yes, you do. know, without being disrespectful to, to previous years, you know, we've, when you play on ser certainly service pitches, they're, they're not of this quality and it changes it changes your game. So it's, um, you know, this is where we've moved forward and giving our best, the, the best players in the forces uh, a good surface to play for and you, you can change the way you play. It's brilliant. Well, they deserve it. I mean, a lot of these players, obviously, they're used to playing at, at you know, non-league level at a pretty high level and um, deserve to have a good surface for these showcase games I mean they're all cup finals you know aren't they I mean every every, every match is a cup final for these teams yeah absolutely. for these players yeah and to be selected to play is one of the great honors in in service football free kick then to the army floated high into the box but uh, unfortunately for them Andy Matthews couldn't get on the end of it tall though he is as the Navy push forward again looking for another goal it's the army though in possession on that right hand side with Cox Plays it inside. Didn't see the switch. The switch was on nice and quickly, but uh, didn't see it. Thompson. And here's Clay Bryant. Nice ball downfield. Well defended by the Navy, though. Yeah, well done. Just yeah. Mark Drysdale there, strong. Just got his body across, made it difficult. Never going to get round him, so... Well, Drysdale, of course, has got such a history in this team. That's a lovely through ball, oh, and once again it's collected by Elliot Holmes on the edge of the box. Good feet, good feet. And Great stood, cross. Stood it on nicely. Well cleared though in the, in the end by the army, getting the defence away, but only as far. It's Lee Thomas here, yeah. come on. But they have brought it clear of the army again, that was such danger again, and Elliot Holmes 
What a great player he is. So yeah, he's sharp. He's great nice. quality. Yeah, he has got good feet and he's, uh, he's looking sharp. And he's got the goal that separates these two teams. Halfway through this second half, this first half here at the home of Portsmouth Football Club at Fratton Park. Royal Navy leading by one goal to nil. Drysdale. Just a little bit uh, ambitious there for the Navy. Yeah, just trying to turn it turn it around the corner for Manny Roach. Manny, Manny had just uh, worked off the shape and just uh, tried to spin in behind, but uh, just couldn't quite get the quality of the pass. That will be a Navy ball. Greg Peel just not able to... Yeah, he's having a bit of a battle up there, isn't he? You know, you, when you're playing against Mark Drysdale and uh, um, uh, Jack Wright, you know, they're good players. You know, Pete Bradley in there as well, you know, they're going to pin you. It's, you you're going to have to uh, work extremely hard to try and get something out of it. But, uh, certainly giving it there all at the moment. The Army looking for this equaliser on the edge of the box. Lewis Simmons, goalkeeper though, clears his lines. He'll end up with the Navy. A lot of space in the middle of the field here for Bradley. Yeah, it's good possession stuff from the Navy again, just slowing it down, looking for the opportunities to go forward. And they pick it up once more with Elliot Holmes. Wide then onto this right hand side and Drysdale. Nice stuff from the Navy here. Chase on though, which uh, Al Snedden can't quite make, and yeah. it goes out for a throw. But again, they've doubled up on there, haven't they? Claire Bryant and uh, Andrew Matthews defending well there, just you know, forcing him out of play and retaining the ball back for the army. Oh, well done, Peel is. And that was a bit of a late one there. Yeah, it was a late one there. Yeah, and Pete Bradley, I think uh, there'll be some words then from the referee, maybe more from. That challenge there on Greg Peel, not a nice one, not a nice one, and I suspect that uh, there will be words with uh, Bradley, maybe even more than that. Yeah, it was a little bit of a late one, yeah, was, a little bit of a naughty one, yeah. and uh, the players are getting involved, but he looks quite in a lot of pain there. Well, Pete Bradley has got away with a severe talking to there. And Army captain Luke Carney is just wondering why that hasn't re resulted in a yellow card. There's quite a few Army players just wondering that, but it was uh, a severe talking to that uh, Chris Arnell has given to Bradley. And uh, he's been on the ground for a while now as Greg. Yeah, he sort of, um, you know, slid in at ankle level, but, um, you know, Peely sort of holding his knee. So whether he's just, uh, as he's fallen, jolted it or twisted it, but uh, he went down in a little bit of pain there and looks a little bit uncomfortable, but he's a strong boy, he'll get up. A few messages, Lynn Holland says, come on the army, my son Jack Layton in the team squad, one to watch for the future. He certainly is, Lynn, and uh, Paige... Bond, another Royal Navy win for the main man himself, Beast Danny Kerr. Go on, big brother. Well, it's not quite over yet. Uh, Paige, who's still got a while to go yet, and the Army are certainly going to have more than their fair say on that. Not quite half an hour played in this game. Good to see that uh, Greg Peel is back up on his feet again. But it was a severe challenge. He's still hobbling around. And is he going to come back? It looks like he is going to come back onto the pitch. Carney's going to take uh, the free kick. I'm sure quite. <laughs> Why is Lewis Simmons off as well? And that will be straight into the hands of the goalkeeper again. McCormick handling it well. Yeah, Lewis Simmons is back on the pitch as well. Must have had treatment from the physio, but didn't uh, quite see an injury with him. So and that one uh, escaped me too, although it was right in front of us. Oh, oh, oh dear! And here's Danny Kerr. Oh, that's a great save. Oh, and the Navy really all sorts of disarray for the, the Army defence there. They're offside. 
and offside. The, the flag has finally gone up. But yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a poor header. He shouldn't have really allowed it to bounce, but I think he's he just trying to get it back to, to uh, Luke on the bounce, but not enough power in the header. But uh, well done to Luke, stood big, strong, flapped up his hands and uh, managed to, to, to deflect it wide. So all in all, a good save. Yeah, and of course, you know, he wouldn't have been, wouldn't have known that the, the flag was up for offside. So you can only go on what you uh, what you see in front of you. Goal kick clearance uh, from uh, Carney. Navy though happy to just press as best they can. Ball goes out of play. Bryant then will take the throw in on this left-hand side for the army. Drysdale again is first to that one. Yeah, some of the... And shielding it out of play. Oh, and I'm in not fact, sure about that. Well, it's a Navy ball, so the officials. So they have it back again. Here's Jack Wright. Nice through ball. Found a lot of space there. And once again, it's Elliot Holmes instigating so much for them so far in this game. Yeah. They do. Holmes again tries well, a little played. back flick, but it's intercepted. Well intercepted by Matty Evans. Evans driving into the opposition half. But again, the Navy win it back fairly easily. He's having a bit of a lonesome battle, is Greg Peel at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, he is, and he's struggling up there. And you know, and that's not through uh, through through lack of effort or technical ability or anything. I think he's you know he's being doubled up on, and you know when the, when the army have got it into him, he's he's he's, he's really got his back to goal and not really got uh, support around him, or at least third man runs getting past him so they can play through. But. Uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the army have got to figure that out and uh, get players around him because I think he's uh, so far he's done a really good job in holding the ball up, but uh, not really got an out ball. Well, the Navy have it and they go long down the pitch. But Carney has it, and here's Andy Matthews, Thompson, still going is Sean Thompson. Big UCAF player, of course. Simple pass. Just needs yeah. to find the right back. And yeah, the Army ball. just needs to get a bit more composure yeah. about their game at the moment, don't they? I yeah, mean, I, I get they're chasing the game, but they're just trying to force it in a little bit. And uh, I think they're better than that. You know, they just need to, to relax on the ball a little bit, not panic. They'll get back in the game. and But uh, so far, the Navy are comfortable. Here's Drysdale, Roche. Drysdale looking to uh, play offside, forwards, yeah. Offside. Elliot Holmes just a straight offside there. In fact, it was uh, no. Dan, yeah, Danny, Dan, Kerr. Danny Kerr who's straight offside. Holmes and Kerr just swapping around sometimes. Um, Danny started on this right-hand side with Elliot Holmes um, on the left, and now they've swapped places. Again, apply... Uh, a a ploy often used at under 23 level by Chris James, trying it again at senior level. He's a great tactician, is, uh, is Chris. And so far, his tactics working perfectly here against a very spirited army team. But it's the Navy who have the lead 1 0. Kerr, brilliant work from him again. The notes actually say, What are your strengths, uh, Danny? Played a few inter services games, weaknesses, lost most of them. Quote, <laughs> I don't sweat, I sparkle vigorously. <laughs> That's yeah. Danny Kerr for you. <laughs> Absolutely. He's certainly a character. There's a little slip there, it could be costly. But... Yeah, misplays pass break. in the end, and Lee Phillips ties his, tidies up. Yeah, it's a few times now that the players have slipped, but we noticed that last year when we played the Navy here. The, the, they obviously water the pitch, and the pitch is, uh, you know, we were chatting to the ground staff last year, and... They said it's such a, a sand-based pitch that they have to really put loads of water on it, which makes it really hard. But um, with, and with the slick water on top, it makes it quite uh, so your touch and your feet have to be absolutely spot on. 
Yeah, our director Sara was asking just before kickoff why they're watering the pitch when we've had so much rain. Good question, but uh, I think you've just answered it because yeah. of the, the sand-based pitch. And, and the fact is that, uh, you know, after last night's game, the pitch is in remarkable condition. Yeah, it is, yeah. Here comes Alan Snedden. He plays it wide then to Elliot Holmes. And Snedden again. It's a great ball in there. I think that's just... Carney's going to get there first. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get there first. Well, Just there. ahead of uh, Manny Roche. There's some intelligent football being played by the uh, by the Navy here, Andy. You know. Yeah. The, the, you know they're playing. Yeah, they're playing some good stuff. They're using the pitch, aren't they? You know, they're they're moving the ball, they're circulating it, they're rotating in midfield. Um, you know, and I think. I think the army are just going a little bit too direct. I think they're capable and they're better to, to, to just try and get a foot a foot in the game. That's great work, actually, from uh, yeah, is. Greg Peel. Did really well, and yeah, he's won the first it. corner of the game. It is the first set-piece corner of this match, and we've been playing for 34 minutes. Yeah, he's done really well there, but that's that was the point I was making earlier. It's a constant battle on his own. You know, he's doubled up through there and dribbled really well through two players. Shows what a quality player he can be. Um, but he just seems to be battling on his own a little bit. But this is a real chance for the for the army. They're, they're obviously a massive threat at set pieces. They're a big side. Yeah, look out for Craig Stevenson in the middle there and Andy Matthews as well. Ball comes there in. It is. And there it is. sure enough, it is a leveller. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's what we needed. It, it was what they needed, their first set piece, and the army have levelled it. And that's what we said about the army. They, you know, they they were in the game, and they just need to settle down. Um, you know, I mean, all... Andy Matthews is an absolute colossus, and he's got in there, and he's headed the army back into the game. It's the Royal Navy one, the army one. Yeah, it's a great header, though. Great header, great great delivery, big power. In fact, it uh, it is actually yeah, Andy Matthews who's the scorer, the big number five. He really is the tallest man on the pitch. Great header from the corner. And that really has made for a very interesting last 15, 15 minutes. minutes of this yeah. first half. Yeah, just who's that on the uh, on the bet on the sideline, just changing his boots. You know, just uh, I think there might be one or two that might do that second half uh, as well. Uh, the Navy straight on the on the attack once more. Looking for a second. That's really spice this one up now. 1-1 one, one in this inter-services clash. It's been very spicy already. Army eventually getting it cleared. And that has gone out for... Well, it's a goal kick in the end has been given. Yeah, who's that? Yeah, Sean Powell there just changing his boots. Maybe Andy Gibson says, you're Mystic Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Mystic Meg, yeah. It's a called called the set piece. <laughs> I'd, it, I'd say it's more experience from what we uh, encountered last week. <laughs> yeah. And Andy says, can you just let Cookie know that Luton are two 0 up at the moment in oh, the in the Premier League? That screws my ac accumulator up. <laughs> yeah. I bore her to win that one. Here come the army. Bit of a mistake at the back there. And Jack Wright will clear this back to his goalkeeper. Oh, deciding oh, to play themselves out of trouble. There's a little nice little work from nice work from David Vincent there, and he's nice put uh, Manny yeah. Roche through. Goalkeeper has to go for it. Eventually, yeah. good work from Luke Kenny puts it out for a, a goal uh, for a for throw in on yeah, this near side. Recovered well there because it's hit the shoulder, isn't it? Of uh, uh, is it Claire Bryant there and. Was quite probably com comfortably going through to Luke, but uh, it's hit the shoulder, and then uh, he's had to recover, adapt his body, and uh, get a slide tackle in. But he's not sure. Short, he's not uh, shy of a slide Great cross tackle from anyway. Roche. Well, we've seen lots of quality in this game so far. Two really good goals, very different goals we've seen. An excellent one from Elliot Holmes, going in from the 18-yard uh, box to score. And then the equaliser coming in from Andy Matthews with a header from a corner. And it makes the score 1-1. Going in towards the last five or six minutes of 
normal time here in this first half. Yeah, it's been a really good game, though. Really entertaining game. I'd, I'd say a fair game, you know. Uh, and spicy too, let's, yeah. not, uh, let's not deny it. <laughs> Absolutely, but, uh, you know, the Navy have been far more comfortable in possession, but, um, you know, the, I think the Army have grown into the game, been a little bit more direct, but been effective at what they've done. Um, so it'll be interesting, the contrast of what happens in the next 50 minutes. Uh, challenge has gone up, and uh, it's uh, Pete Bradley who's gone down there. Greg Peel went in for that. Yeah. Just another aerial challenge, but he's all right. It's, it's been a, a bit of niggle between uh, a couple of the players. And uh, Chris Arnell having a, another stern word with uh, Pete Bradley, who he spoke to earlier. It's Bradley who of course went down this wouldn't be Army Navy of course Andy without there being a little bit of niggle going on yeah absolutely and that's that uh, inter-service rivalry of course there is you know it's uh, people the, the players care you know they're not not only are they representing themselves they're representing the uh, the, the, the insignia on their shirt the referee stopped the game Jack Wright going in there Holmes, Elliot Holmes. Everything that's good about the Navy has come from him in this first half. Yeah, he's been bright, isn't Here's he? Here's Roche. Can he get the cross in? Well challenged, and Ooh. that will be a corner. So, the Royal Navy have their opportunity then from their first corner. And you can just see the big guns going up for this as well. Pete Bradley, and particularly Jack Wright going up onto the left-hand side of the penalty area. Needs some good delivery. And who knows? Is Mystic Meg going to strike again? Yeah, let's hope not. I need a 1-1 draw. <laughs> not being biased. Sean Powell takes it. A little 2v1. But eventually it's cleared. It always strikes me as being a bit odd. You know, you get the de all the defenders going up for a, expecting a, a, a long corner and then they take a short corner. But that's uh, presumably tactical. Yeah, that's the um, that's the beauty of the surprise, isn't it? Obviously, uh, if you put all your big lads up and then you, you put your centre-halves on the big lads and, and you do something different, that's that's that element of surprise. Hopefully, uh, give you an advantage. Danny, M Danny Harrison says, come on the army from Tidworth, supporting club mates Kearney, Peely and Moulding tonight. Uh, it's been a good recovery from the army going down 1-0 after just 11 minutes or so and they fought their way back to make it 1-1 here's Roche well intercepted a great interception for the army by Sean Thompson oh. and he was fouled I tell you what he's bought that one he's done, he's done well to uh, check inside but uh, if I'm honest I think he bought that one he saw uh, he was losing the ball and just uh, Played, played the referee, shall we say, and uh, put, well, done really well for his team. Yeah, he's got the decision. And Clay Bryant, I think, will relieve that for is... Callum Cox to take. Or is it going to be a Luke Kearney delivery? Well, you can see again the uh, Army big guns, the uh, defenders have gone up there, expecting a long one, a high free kick. Floated in. He's there again. And the goalkeeper is there <laughs> first. But you can see the tactics. Andy Matthews yeah. once again going in there, and he was very close to it. But uh, the Navy have a chance then to break themselves. Here's Evans. That's a great ball. Black has not gone up. Yes, oh, it has now. now. And in the end, Greg Peel, he puts his left foot behind it and it flies over the bar. It was a great switch, though. It's a great bit of vision. Just uh, Peely just sort of didn't quite time his run effectively and just uh, straight straight that yard offside. But uh, again, good play. Janet Turner says, great goal. Army are back in the room. And Kosovo Ace says, hi from Kosovo this evening. Good evening to you. So we'd love to hear from you wherever you're watching around the world. 
That's good from Drysdale. He's just come down this side and switched the point of attack. Done well. Bradley back to right and back to Bradley again. That didn't go where he wanted it to go. Instead, Lee Phillips has it. Here's Peel. And he pays the one-two with Phillips. Can Phillips get the cross in? It's a good cross in, oh, straight into the arms of the goalkeeper, but uh, that was real danger again for the Navy. Yeah, and it was of their own there? making. Yeah, it was. Who was that down there, 11? Uh, Jane, uh, Lee Phillips there with great feet, just to check inside, deliver a cross. But unfortunately, his quality of the cross just wasn't quite good enough. But uh, the Navy just need to uh, try and penetrate a little bit. They're, you know, they're comfortable in possession in this, in this, in their own final third now. They're just, I think. Uh, the army have got uh, have gone tight with them like they did with us last week. They did it really well. They run with loads of energy and they're just uh, struggling to penetrate that line, that passing line. Drysdale goes back to his goalkeeper in the end. A great energy from Lewis Simmons trying to close him down with the press. Free kick says the referee. The Navy will try to take quickly, but uh, they've got to take it from the right place, says Chris Arnell. That was better from the Navy. They just, you know, passed the ball two, three, four times and then changed the point of attack and then, you know, penetrated and, and won, won, the, uh, won the free kick from uh, centre-half coming in through the back of you. Drysdale. Here's Roche. Finds his goalkeeper again. Jason Birch, not so sunny Bogner Regis. Good evening to you, Jason. And uh, Lizzie Cousin says, come on the Navy here in the stands cheering you on and watching us at the same time. Takes quite a lot of doing that. Thomas. Nice ball through. That's a great pass. Lovely ball for Danny Kerr. Kerr. Great run from him in towards Holmes again on the edge of the box. Holmes takes the shot, takes a deflection, and it's stopped eventually by the army. That was almost a, a carbon copy of what he did in the to produce the goal for the Navy. Is that five minutes of stoppage? Yeah, Martin Mitchell, the fourth official, says we're going to have five extra minutes at the end of this pulsating first half here at Fratton Park. Yeah, it's been a good game, hasn't it, John? It yeah, has. It's been, uh, you know, some good football on show, you know, trying to put both teams trying to play. Some oh. tackles, some, you know, that that, that tenaciousness of an inter-service game, you know, and uh, yeah, I, th I think it's delivered. So credit to both sides. Yeah, lots of quality on show here as well. And uh, patient play this from the Navy. Just patient build-up. Jack Wright. Snedden wins the throw for the Navy. He receives it. That's nice uh, interpassing then from the Navy. Here's Elliot Holmes, the danger man, again on the edge of the box. Yeah, he has been their threat, hasn't he? And uh, you're right, he's been their, their danger man. He's, and that's he, a lovely he's, he's through, really through well. ball to Drysdale. Navy looking for a second goal just for the interval. Well, referee oh. says that was a hand used by Manny Roche there. The clearance from Andy Matthews went straight at him. But uh, Linesman didn't give anything, did he? But uh, referees made the call, made the decision. Well, lots of claims from the players for handball. Yeah, absolutely. Not sure we, who, what the managers will be, uh, whether which manager will be happy going in at 1-1. Um, probably, probably the RAF manager, to be honest. But um, be uh, int love to be a fly on the wall to listen to both managers' team talks. Well, I think they'll be happy with certain aspects of their play, but yeah. uh, we'll know that there's improvements that, that they can both make. Yeah, Again, nice Greg. bit of play from Greg Peel. He's worked really yeah. hard in this yeah, first yeah. half. He's been a real menace for, uh, for them at the back there. He's... Uh, you know, he's got that gangly frame, hasn't he, that just uh, looks very cumbersome and, you know, he, but uh, he's effective with what he does. Um, he's a good player. Drysdale then will take the throw. 
Already played two minutes of stoppage time here. And that ball has gone out of play. The army will have the throw. Just two and a half minutes left then of this first half. Into stoppage time here. Five minutes of stoppage time being played. There's Peely again, just doing what he's yeah. done. All, For a, all. You know, he's such a tall, gangly player, but look at he's yeah, done really well there again. Yeah, te technically he's got great feet. Evans, and they're still jockeying for the army, maybe looking for a second goal, but yeah. eventually the ball goes out of play. And I, I've got a feeling that uh, the two coaches, I think that Jimmy Blair will probably be happiest. Yeah, I simply because you know his boys have come back into the game. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree with you. I think they've grown, grown with a little bit of um, confidence, um, and and they've come back into the game. I agree. You know, and. go down 1-0 so early on in the game and then it took it a while to settle down but they've uh, they've, they've got themselves and drawn themselves back into the game so um, you know credit where credit's due well, Andy Matthews was telling us in the, the build up to this game how much what a privilege it was to play on this pitch here at Fratton Park and he'll be doubly delighted to have uh, scored here with a, a powerful header to equalise for the army it's 1-1 here going into these last few moments then of stoppage time we played three and a half minutes we've got five minutes of added time at the end of this first half it is nip and tuck neck and neck at the moment here's Danny Kerr again eventually the ball goes out of play Army throw, and I'd imagine that's uh, that's probably about us, isn't it? It's probably about it. Yep. John Douglas says, "Great first half, but the army can do it. Take that, navy." <laughs> <laughs> Great to hit, have all this inter-services rivalry coming up on our social media today. And thanks to all of you who are tuning in wherever you are for this game tonight, Thomas. Goes through it again. Yeah, good tackles there in you know, the last couple of minutes. Here's Sean Thompson. Ooh. And that's a really, that sums up this first half in many ways. Manny Roche, it was a. Yeah, working nothing, really, really hard. Nothing doing for him, but he still goes for it to cut out any potential danger. Army then will have the goal kick. And we have played our now five minutes of stoppage time here. So I'd imagine this will be the last kick of the first half and we are at 1-1 with an Elliot Holmes goal to open the scoring for the Royal Navy and a great equaliser from a corner headed in by Andrew Matthews don't worry there's no earthquake going on this is just uh, the fans keeping their feet warm tonight I think Yeah. <laughs> as Carney takes the goal kick and that will be the last action of Very a hard. really entertaining first half here at Fratton Park. It is the Royal Navy won, the British Army won at half time. As the two teams leave the field, Andy, maybe your half time sum up for us. Yeah, great game. Great game. I thought um, the Navy. Navy settled settled really well, passed the ball about, rotation was good and showed that uh, they've got some quality and good technical footballers in their possession-based game. Um, and then, like you say, conceded, uh, the Army unfortunately conceded really early, but um, they could have crumbled and then they, they sort of they found their feet a little bit and gone a little bit more direct. Greg Peel, I think, has been absolutely fantastic in, in holding the ball up for them as a, as a lone striker and uh, and rightly so. They're, they're always going to be a danger with the, the size of some of the players that they've got and, uh, you know, it came to fruition with a great great delivery from the corner and a great header from uh, from Andy Ma uh, from Andy Matthews. So um, you know, in, in fairness, sort of the game the, the first half was split into two 20 minutes, and uh, you know a fair result one one at, uh, at half time. Looking forward to the second half. A fair half time score then equally brim between the Royal Navy and the British Army.
John Knighton and Andy Kutcher here and we'll of course we'll be back for the second half and also during the half time hope he'd talk to Gibraltar Dave, Dave Wilson, one of the recipients of the golden caps that were handed out to former Royal Navy players who have made a hundred or more appearances for the senior service since they were founded back in 1904. But hopefully you'll join us for that and hopefully you'll join us for the second half. We're now going to bring you action and highlights from last week's Inter-Services Games. is Joe Thomas, the Welshman. Oh, he's oh, caught he's it in it. position. It's one on one. Really big mistake. And the Army take the lead. It's Jamie Turner, the former Manchester United youth player, who takes full advantage. I mentioned leadership group. That is not what Joe Thomas needs to be doing there. Now Gosling, and that's a bit of space that the RAF want him to have. Good ball through. And Joe Spalding with a big chance. He's, he's nearly tripped, but Joe Spalding. Oh, and we talked about composure. The Army had here one and the RAF do not at the other. Corner for the Army then, whipped in. Towards the near post, he's headed on, and he to the back Two of the net. net. The Army have a second, and it's Lewis Simmons who was waiting, prowling at the back. Flicked on at the near post, Lewis Simmons scores, and the champions are in complete disarray. It's 2-0 to the Army. Good ball in, oh. a real chance. And again, he's left free in the middle. I just wonder if Sean Thompson will watch that back and go, maybe I could have been a little bit braver there, take mm. a chance. Credit to... Here we go, and he's in. The army, Simmons is in, didn't quite bounce for him. Simmons across the box, good save. And Debnam clears. Now Gray again. Unfortunate deflection off Ayat. Wasn't just quite not, the pass he was looking for. not giving him any options in the final third of the Air Force. Oh, that's a late one. Referee says play on. Good advantage from the Navy official. Cross in towards the near post. He's flicked on. He's a chance at the back. And Is Campbell in? does get his goal. The flag stays down. The man who was desperate to score in this inter-services does get his goal. The captain strikes when the RAF need him. And maybe, just maybe, there might be back in this game. I had really good drop of the shoulder, and he'll look for the strike. Oh, good save and Devon Devon is in. In. It's 2 2 on the stroke of half time. The RAF are absolutely triumphant. Wow, where has this come from? Inter services football never fails to give you drama. It's 2 2, and five minutes ago, the army looked comfortable. looking for Peel who would have been offside and Turner's quite frustrated there not just with his poor pass that didn't work out but actually if Peel would have got himself onside there and made that little bit of extra effort the army could have been in that's looking for Bright who hadn't made that extra effort he's got Campbell in the penalty area he's looked towards him it's Michael Campbell oh, it's 3 two. and the RAF bench goes wild he loves it in all the shot, absolutely loves it. A hat-trick two years ago, well, he's at the double now, and the RAF have completed the turnaround, a performance, a comeback of champions. And now the Army have got a bit of pressure on here. Just a That's searching ball, he's Greenway. in. Oh! Paul at Brigg has lost it, oh! somehow it didn't drop in. I think it came off an RAF boot, it will be a corner. Talk about living on the edge. It's a good delivery. Very it's good up. delivery, and it's over. Somehow, somehow Matthews has headed it over. That was inches. That's a good ball wide, though, for the RAF. And can Phil Bright get a ball in here? He can. Deflected off Mulding, but it will drop. And the keeper's not got anywhere it's near it, Kenny. Goal. And he's oh, in the post, and oh, it's over. And it's that, that was the RAF's win, ready to take. 
And now Turner. That's a great Smart ball. Smart ball. Stevenson's up in. from the back. Oh. It'll be a corner. Will we see Luke Kearney. He's been given the nod to go forward. I think we've hit the point that the kitchen sink's happening. Kearney's come in. You've got, you've, got Math, you've got Matthews up there. You've got Stevenson up there. You've got every... Well, you've got 10 army players in the box, it feels like. Good ball in. Just dropped down and... Here he is. Luke Kearney. Surely not. Surely not. <laughs> Luke Kearney. Oh, <laughs> the writing was on the wall. It'll stay in for Matthews, by the way. And it's hit the side net in. If Luke Kearney <laughs> scores there... I think we'd have dropped the mic and walked on and celebrated with him ourselves. Another look at his watch from the referee, Maldin. It wasn't the greatest ball, but it's flicked through. Rawley to another big header for the RAF, and that is it. Well, uh, what, what a game. <laughs> what an incredible comeback from the RAF, it must be said. 2-0 down, going into injury time at the first half, and at the end of the game, they've won the game 3-2. That is what it takes to be into services champions, and on this performance and on this evidence... The Navy are going to have a hell of a time stopping them in Shrewsbury. Really big mistake, and the Army take the lead. And the RAF have it in the back of the net. Ball goes down, and the referee says that is a penalty. Chance though for the Air Force, that's a great save. Whipped in. Towards the near post, he's headed on, and he to the back Two of the net. Out. Cross in towards the near post, he's flicked on, he's a chance at the back, and Cameron does get his goal. It's a shot, and it's a second goal. Hi, I'm Suzanne Chislett, and this is In Case You Missed It. Celebration for the Sappers. The Royal Engineers are the Army Rugby Union Intercourt Champions once again. They beat the Royal Artillery 37-27 in the League One final at Aldershot. It continues the Sappers' recent domination of the event as it's their third intercourt title in a row. A close call, Royal Marine Lance Corporal Taylor Lawrence finished sixth in the four-man bobsleigh world championships. Lance Corporal Lawrence was in Great Britain's number one sled, along with Brad Hall, Greg Cackett and Leon Greenwood. Also competing in Germany was fellow Royal Marine Adam Baird and two paras private Callum Dixon, who finished 18th overall in GB's number two sled. Better news for fellow slider and former Army Lance Corporal Corey Mapp. He's won bronze at the Para Bobsleigh World Cup in St Moritz. Mapp finished behind winner and home favourite Christopher Stewart and Robert Bolt from the United States. Mapp lost both legs when his vehicle ran over an explosive device in Afghanistan in 2010. And completing an epic journey, the crew of Atlantic Rocks in Antigua reaching the end of their row across the ocean from Lanzarote as part of the Atlantic Dash. The four RAF regiment gunners took on the challenge to raise money for five military charities.
Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, a great night of uh, boxing next Wednesday at Aldershot, of course, for the annual inter-services competition. And uh, don't forget uh, that we've also got live football as well next Wednesday evening as well. Uh, during the day, the women's match will be on both our main channels on uh, YouTube and also on our Forces News Facebook page. But we have a split service for you uh, next Wednesday evening because uh, in the evening the football will be live on Facebook, uh, but the boxing will be the first part, the first half of the boxing will be live on YouTube only. And then, of course, for the second half of the boxing, we'll be back together again on all both of our networks as well. So loads to look forward to next Wednesday with a, one of our biggest days of military sport here on our BFBS service. And please hope you can join in for that. Well. Andy, just in front of us at the moment, you can see that we've got uh, a, a lovely presentation going on at the moment where 16 of the wonderful players who have got 100 caps for the Royal Navy uh, over the years since the Royal Navy Football Association was founded back in 1904 are being honoured tonight. 16 of them. Uh, not all of them, of course, are with us anymore, very sadly, but uh, there are some families who are here tonight uh, who are really here to enjoy a great night and have their photos taken. They've all been uh, in the director's box. Uh, great uh, tribute, really, to uh, the... Uh, success at Royal Navy and indeed military football over the years, Andy. Yeah, totally, and, uh, you know, and rightly so. Uh, anybody who plays for their service uh, that many amount of times, you know, it deserves all the accolades, and uh, what an absolute fantastic gesture by the Royal Navy to... Uh, to sort of recognise these, these individuals, and especially, uh, you know, obviously football with, you know, the achievement of playing back in, you know, if we say back in the day, because the services were a lot bigger then. So actually, in my opinion, selection would have been a lot harder. So it just shows you what talented individuals they were while they were playing. Well, I was looking through some of the names earlier and there are some who actually got more than 200 caps, which in itself is absolutely remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be nice to have 200 games. <laughs> <laughs> But with those numbers uh, years ago, maybe maybe they had a little bit more capacity to get off for uh, sport. But uh, but like you say, we've uh, what a great achievement for all those uh, certain individuals and proud. Uh, yeah, they should be they should be extremely proud, and so should their families. Oh, they're golden caps, and they will be uh, absolutely. I'm just looking down there, Fraser Quirk, uh, who's probably one of the players I remember when I first started watching uh, military football. Uh, you know, he was a, a regular in the team, and now, of course, his son is on the bench uh, tonight as well uh, for the Royal Navy. So, a very proud day for for Fraser. The players just making their way out then onto the pitch then for the second half. And if we've got anything like as much excitement in the, the second half, Andy, as we had in the first, I think we're in line for a real treat, aren't we, of, uh, of uh, military football? Yeah, absolutely. And it's difficult to call this one. You know, um, like we said, you know, it's clear to see that probably the Navy are the more technical, technically gifted side. Um, but the, the Army have, uh, have, have come back into the game and rightly so and deservedly so and uh, have made it a little bit more difficult so uh, it'll be interesting what the what both managers tactically have said at half time and if they've made any changes or or how, how the patterns of plays, plays are going to uh, play out this uh, in the second half yeah two very different styles of play here actually and uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see which one wins out in the end um, and uh, from your point of view, I know that you're obviously make, making copious notes I can see here in our, in our commentary position but uh, I think you'll be hoping that the Navy drop at least uh, two points here, won't you? And, yeah, uh, and of course, I mean, we've still got everything to play for next week, but from an RAF point of view, uh, an Army win would be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. An Army win would be perfect. Um, worst case scenario, a draw, and obviously if one of the teams goes on and wins it, and if that's the Navy, then we make it a cup final next week. You know, at the end of the day, they're two games. I, I, I don't think any team sets out to go and get a draw, or, or, you know, we always set out all three. I know all three managers really well, and we all set out to win every single game you know it's uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity for to, to showcase service football and uh, you know you always want to go out with a win well, one of the things we were asking actually before kickoff was uh, whether it was uh, better to play the first game and sit out the second or to play second and third or first and second you know I don't know you, you've got the better have the benefit of, of uh, having all the scenarios over the years yeah for the last two years we've always played first and the second game and then uh, this year's uh, a little break in tradition we played the first game and then obviously got this opportunity to watch both both teams again so uh, obviously the army is irrelevant now but the navy uh, at least we've had an opportunity to have a look at them 
Well, there's at least one change being made for the Royal Navy in this second half, and uh, just looking down on the on the list, ooh. and that came very close to one of our cameras there. <laughs> but uh, actually, just looking around, I can't see any changes to either side. So the players sticking, or the managers sticking with the uh, their uh, original lineups that we had right at the start of the game. It's 1-1 here at Fratton Park between the Royal Navy in blue and the British Army in red. Jack Wright just keeps it in play. Oh, oh here we go. Oh. A real challenge going on. The referee is... Uh, I'll tell you what, he's got away with one there. <laughs> well, Luke Kearney trying to play his way out. I think he's got away with one. So there, do Luke. I. I mean, I think that uh, he fell very, very easily. And it was a horrendous back pass, it, and I thought he dealt with it really well. And then uh, obviously he uh, tried to have a little dribble, and I think he's got away with one there, if I'm honest. Well, a bit of controversy then at the start of this second half. And maybe they won't be doing that too much in a hurry. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy Blair just having a few words with the fourth official at the moment about that. Um, but the army back at the other end straight away with Lee Phillips. Ball runs out of play in the end. Won well by Manny Roche. But the army still have the pressure on. Jack Wright goes in there for the challenge, makes it in the end. In the end, it's uh, cleared up field by Sean Powell. That's a foul. Referee allows play to go on. That's definitely a foul. Yeah. And that will booking. be... That will be a booking, that. So it's a yellow card for uh, Matty Evans. Yeah, I think Matty Evans has taken one there for the team, but uh, whether it was a foul further up the pitch, but... Uh, yeah, I think he's... Uh, he knew, he knew the uh, Royal Navy were breaking there and quickly with numbers. A little yeah. bit too much back chat going on at the moment, and I'd imagine that uh, Chris Arnell's not going to be too happy with that and is going to be uh, clamping down on it before too long. But it is the yellow card for Evans. What's that, the fourth of the game now, I think? It is. You know, so there's a couple of players out there who just need to be a little bit careful, settle down into the game. Well, Craig Stevenson is one of them. He's uh, just had a word with the referee. Uh, but it's Jack Wright who'll take this free kick for the Navy. The next to go long onto this left-hand side and eventually Callum Cox put it, sit, puts it out for the throw. Royal Navy one, Army one, early moments of this second half. The Navy did have the ball in the back of the net. Referee said it was a foul. Oh. And that's a very late challenge there Another as well tackle. by Danny Kerr. Danny Kerr. And I think uh, Danny Kerr might find himself in a bit of trouble for that. But uh, he's walked away and the referee has allowed him to get away with it. I uh, don't think he'll get away with too many more of those, Andy. No, no. And it's uh, started off a little bit scrappy and I think that's that second half nerves. Um, players trying to make a, a, a stamp in the game and, you know... Um, just uh, just need to settle down. Referee just needs to keep control of the game and uh, you know he's done he's done a good job so far. So this time uh, Luke Kearney then will uh, take it long. Right on the end of it, but only as far as Lewis Simmons. Simmons takes it wide onto this right hand side. Oh it's a foul. Well a full-blooded challenge, shall we say. The referee has allowed play to go on. Lots of meaty challenges going in at the moment from both sides. This is really spiced up here. 1-1, so much to play for. Vincent clears it, but only as far as Jamie Turner on the edge of the box. Oh, well played, nicely. Nice little triangle there just to get out of trouble. Well played. 
Here's Dave Vinson, did well there. Yeah, just spread it well. But a good challenge yeah, coming good. in for the army. And here's Sean Thompson. He can do lots with the ball. Nice interplay with Peel. Shot comes in and it's cleared eventually by Pete Bradley for the Navy. But these are good moments for the Army here, Andy. Yeah, they're really good. Um, they've come out really out the traps, the Army. Um, started really, really well on the front foot, uh, not giving the, the Navy time to play. Again, the, the, the Navy, Navy have been composed at the back and a couple of times played the outro. Ooh, tell you what. Well, that was... Uh, Again, Andy Greg, Matthews Greg, went down there. No, He's, is it Greg, Greg Peely? Oh, was it Peel? Greg Peel went yeah, down? Greg yeah, Greg Peel. But again, it, that's yep. that's that's Greg just doing what Greg does. You know, he's strong, he's big, he's cumbersome, and he's uh, he's becoming a real nuisance for the for the centre halves for the Navy. Yeah, he's a right menace, isn't he, for the yeah. Navy so far? So McCormack will just uh, settle it down. He's going to go along with this goal kick. A navy throw, or is it an army throw? Army throw. So. Collected in the end by Reese Thomas, blocked though by Peel. That's a really strong header yeah, coming really in good. from uh, Stevenson. Craig Stevenson, and uh, arm, the army are clearly being told to really go for it in the second half. In well, they need the moments. win, don't they? Press, you know? press. So they've got to... They've got... That's a lovely through ball. Elliot Holmes on the chase. A great defensive work then yeah. from Andy Matthews. Yeah, covered really well. Covered the ground, didn't he? Because he's, uh, he's a big lad, but covers the ground well, doesn't he? Yeah. Tracy Peel, come on, Army lads. Greg's mum and dad watching from St. Lucia this evening, where I bet you it's a bit warmer than it is here. It's a very mild night here in Portsmouth, actually, but I bet uh, it's a bit too warm out there in the Caribbean this evening. Navy building then. Vincent back to Drysdale, but the, Ar the Army have won it back temporarily. Oh, that's a good, uh, that's a good foot that from uh, Manny Bradley. Roche. Here's Roche again. That's really good work from uh, them and Alan Snedden this time, working really hard for the Navy. But uh, Thompson wins it back. Yeah, wins that's it a back foul. And, then, and then gives the foul away. Well, well, they're playing. In fact, Roche thought that he was the one who was fouled. And in fact, what's happened here? No. Yeah, he's giving it to the Navy, I think. Yeah. Initially, he gave the free kick to the army, didn't he? I think. Yeah, there was a bit of a turnover there that uh, the navy had it, and then uh, the army won it back, and then the navy was a, a bit of a niggle again now. Manny Roche just trying to trip him up as he uh, <laughs> runs away. Well, great to have so many of you tuning in tonight to watch this inter-services game. Free kick then floated in. Jack on the end of it, but uh, the Could army can bring on. it clear now. Here's an opportunity for them with oh. Greg Peel, but uh, Navy covered themselves pretty well there, and now they're on the counter attack. Yep, defended really well. That's nice work from yeah, he's Cox. Been, yeah, he's had a good game uh, as Callum. He's he's been steady there, hasn't he? You know, because well, he, he, he's had a real test there against uh, uh, Elliot Holmes. Yeah, know. well, he's he's had Holmes and Kerr to yeah. uh, 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 to face. They've been swapping over regularly in his first inter services championship this year, and certainly doing very well indeed for the army. That's a really nice one too. Oh, that's unlucky that, but well played. Here's okay. Holmes. Nice ball inside to Vincent. Looking for the one-two, but eventually it's Clay Bryant who collects it. Out onto that far side of the field. Nice bit of control then from Lee, Lee Phillips. Phillips. Yeah, done well again. Little whip ball. Cross to there test out the oh. defence. Oh, some lucky. But it didn't quite work for Peel, no, did it? His legs weren't in the right place. 
But again, nice build-up play there and some uh, some great wing play. Well, this is very much the Army's possession game winning at the moment. Maybe a few concerns for Chris James. As he looks on. And Jimmy Blair will be pretty happy with the way his team has started the second half, I'm sure, for the Army. But here are the Navy with Jack Wright. Danny Kerr is chasing it, shadowed by Craig Stevenson. Oh, Out of play, that. that'll be a Navy ball. Quickly taken by Sean Powell. And here's Bradley. Yeah, the... the the Army have just locked in, haven't they? They're out of possession, they're going to that 4-5-1 formation, but... Uh, pressing well, aren't they, at the moment? Yeah, they are pressing well. It's these little switches of play that the, the Navy, because they create the overload on the in wide areas. Snedden to Thomas. Reese Thomas across to Jack Wright. First time touch to Sean Powell. Powell gets the cross in. Defended, yeah, clear ball. head by Bryant in the end. Yeah, it's a really good ball. It's really well worked, to be fair. They've gone down the right, switched, switched the play quickly, created the overload and then whipped a, whipped a, a steady ball in. Well, the atmosphere really building here at Fratton Park. Approaching the hour. And it's still locked at 1-1. Thrown on that far side of the field then for the Navy. Which Mark Drysdale with uh, Dry, Drysdale not taking this one. It's uh, aimed at Alan Snedden and another throw. It'll be Manny Roche who will take it. Goes and retrieves the ball. Roche then with the throw. But it's the army, he'll bring it clear. Great challenge from Drysdale. Yeah, good feet there to and get out. And here's Vincent. Bradley. Aims for the through oh, ball, lucky. but uh, just beat Danny Kerr. Couldn't quite get on the end of it. Oh, oh and no. there's a slip. Oh, well and the one the person you can't afford to let win the ball is Elliot Holmes. He's done well there to dig it out. Recover, yeah, he did recovered do well. well recovered Callum Cox well. did well in the end then. Just again, that slip on the pitch. We had some light winds blowing around the stadium before kick-off, but absolutely no wind at all now. No, it's a beautiful night, isn't it? It's a brilliant night for football. Really mild. Well, that's not going to pose any problems at all for the uh, army defence. Busy old atmosphere here inside the ground. Big anticipation from uh, yeah. all the spectators. Another great flick. Majority are supporting the Navy, as you would expect. It is their home fixture. Yeah. More than a 1,000 people here in the stadium tonight. Up goes Danny Kerr. Yeah. And Alan Snedden. But, uh, the Army bring it clear. Navy win it back. Here's Manny Roche. It's great battling from the Navy. Ooh. And Elliot Holmes. Wide onto this left hand side. Back to Powell. And Powell still going. Again, using all the width of the pitch. Yeah, just with spread, Drysdale. spreading it nicely. Powell again. Good bit of possession for the for the Navy. This is their best possession so far in the second half. Yeah. Loose ball there, but well won by Jack Wright. Wright still going, goes down, yeah, wins kick. the free kick. Dangerous position this, but... Uh... And it was Callum Cox who made the challenge in the end, and Jack Wright is still down on the, on the ground. And the call for the physio to come on and take a look. It's like Chris is just called in a few players back. Subs have been warming up, so whether he's just considering making a change just to spice up the game, change the game, or 
or whether genuinely uh, is that Jack right down there got a genuine injury uh, referee just looking at his cards I don't think was he planning to show a yellow to Callum Cox for that challenge but I don't I think he's put the cards away now Yvonne Powell says, to come on the Royal Navy, and Sean Powell, Gary Connor, Yvonne Shannon and Elliot cheering on from Mid Wales this evening. Callum Wilkinson, go on the army. And Anne Roche says, bring on Sol. I think she'd like to see both her sons on the pitch tonight. Paul Carter says, some tasty tackles going in. Enjoying the game tonight, Paul. Glad you're enjoying it with us this evening. And I mentioned uh, Tracy Peel in St Lucia tonight. Uh, Greg's mum and dad watching the game from the Caribbean. Looks like Jack will be all right. He's just uh, a little hobble on the left, left leg, but uh, looks like he should be all right. Callum Wilkinson, go on the red men. Top bins. Callum, good to hear from you tonight on YouTube. A formidable player. Not too long ago. And George Emmett tells me that Bournemouth have scored. Is that 3-1? Because I think... Uh, <laughs> I've not been keeping a close eye, but uh, I'm just uh, taking the uh, free kick then. Comes in. And it's straight at the keeper in the end from Al Sneddon. Good positioning from uh, Luke Kearney. Yeah. Takes a lot to beat him. Jack Wright is still having some attention. He's just hobbling on the touchline in front of us at the moment as the play goes on on the far side of the field he is going to come back onto the field I think yeah he's just struggling a little bit of a hobble isn't he but for how long I wonder he's a sort of player that uh, looks like Owen James again uh, Chris James won't want to lose one, one of the UCAF boys Peely coming off yep. straight swap for Owen James up top yeah well Owen James his debut at this level but as you quite rightly say Andy and played a major part in UCAF's success out there in France in the Kentish Cup. Owen James comes on, and uh, I'll tell you what, that Greg Peel's really put a, yeah, he's a shift a, in, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he has, yeah, he's been fantastic for the Army, I thought. You know, caused, caused the back three of the... Uh, looks like uh, Jack Wright's still hobbling, doesn't look... Yeah, doesn't the Navy look. are going to make a change very shortly. Gary Hurd, I think, is going to be coming on for them, number 17. Does yeah, it? Jack is still hobbling. I don't yeah. think we're going to see too much more of him, which is a real shame. Doesn't look comfortable at all, does he? Yeah, because not only is he a fine defender, but he's also a, a great weapon for them from yeah. set pieces. Carney then with the clearance. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that uh, Owen James is as tall, isn't he, as... Uh, yeah, he's he's, yeah, he is. He's a unit as well. You know, he's, uh, he's, yeah, and that's Jack right down. I think that's his night done. Gemma Medicott says, "Come on, the Royal Navy, especially Pete Bradley. Love from his sister, brother, and law and the kids as well. All watching tonight. Looks like a triple su substitution from uh, from Chris. Yeah, and I think uh, Annie Ross, you're going to have your um, wishes granted because Sol is definitely coming on." as will be Jack McCormack and uh, and also, as I mentioned, Gary Hurd. So the change is being made. The first man leaving the field is uh, Jack. Jack Wright. And also coming off the field for them. Sneddon, is it Sneddon? Yeah. Of, yeah, Alan Sneddon's coming off to be replaced by Sol Roche. And who's the third? And the other change that's going to be made is Manny Manny Roche is coming up actually so, sorry Anne you still got only one of your boys on so it's a, a straight swap Gary Hurd coming on for him and also coming on wearing number 16 is Jack McCormack and he'll be replacing as we've already noticed Jack Wright so those are the changes they brought some height on, though. All three yeah. lads are, uh, are big lads, and, uh, you know, the, the three lads that they brought on were a lot smaller than three, so that might change uh, a dynamic or, a, or, or an option that the, the Navy might play at. 
It's now 3-3 at Bournemouth, just down the road, apparently. Oh, wow. According to Jason Birch. And Tracy Peel says, well done, Greg. Lewis Smith says, yes, Owen James on the pitch. Now, I wonder whether Owen James is a potential match winner for the army here. Huge amount of height. Yeah, it's a good, good, good header one there. Jamie know. Turner claiming that there was a foul, but it's just a, a throw in then to the team in red. Another important flick. Oh, you're in, you're in. Oh, and they are in, yeah. and that is in the back of the net. No, it isn't. Off the post. The well, post. would you believe it? What a chance that was for Lee Phillips. A big mistake at the back. Well, they missed it, and uh, it caused all sorts of problems at the back for the Royal Navy. And agonisingly off the post from Lee Phillips. It remains 1-1 here. Could be a little lifeline there. There's, there's your, there's your lifeline there uh, for the Navy. My goodness me. This game's had so much excitement about it. Back in again. The army coming forward. One more. That's a brilliant bit of play from Lewis Simmons. Still going, but he's eventually loses out just to ran, ran McCormack. Into a little bit of a dead alley there. The Navy. Had a bit of a warning there. And here comes Danny Kerr into the penalty area. That's a really great challenge from yeah, great tackle. Andy Matthews there. Great run, though, from Danny there. Broke the line. You know, great third man run. You know, that's what you'll get from Danny all day long. He's, uh, you know, as everybody knows, unbelievably fit, great athlete. He'll break the lines and uh, he'll cause you problems in behind. Well, I hope you're enjoying this game as much as we are because it is a cracking encounter. Short corner taken. Elliot Holmes, and it's in into the net, and it is another goal for the Royal Navy. Oh, I say, it was headed in, and that is a second goal for the Navy. They take the lead here, and congratulations to them. And Great goal. The man on the end of it, well... <laughs> Great goal by the Navy there, but uh, you're yeah. going gonna to get punished if you leave a 2v1 on the uh, on the corner. Yeah, the and you know, it was a substitute who's just come on, wasn't it? Sol Roche, yeah. who headed the ball in. Yeah. And yeah. it was a great corner, really well taken. The Royal Navy back in front here by two goals to one. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, when you in got... Fact, it was it was Jack McCormack who got on the end of it in the end. Yeah. So but... McCormack with a header, but lots of space in that box for the corner. <laughs> You're shaking your head, Andy. I can't <laughs> believe the army of that gullible to leave 2v1 on a corner and allow players to run at you. They did it in the first half and nearly got punished and then done it again in the second half. But, um, you know, that's, that's the technical detail of football, unfortunately, and uh, just been caught out by a set piece there. So they've got a really fight now to get back in the game, but uh, well done to the Navy because they uh, they suffered a little scare there. With, well, just with, yeah, with literally just a few post. seconds ago, the ball hit the post, didn't it? From it agonisingly, the army could have been ahead. Absolutely, it takes great character. You go down the other end, and uh, you know you punish, punish, take your luck when it comes, and you punish them when uh, when you've got an opportunity. Well. And the pace of this game shows absolutely no signs of slowing down. No. The army then will be pushing now for another equaliser. They've got the back in themselves back into the game once. Lovely control from Danny Kerr. Yeah, they've got their tails up now, haven't they? And here they go down this right-hand side with Roche. Yes. And he wins the corner. Another corner then for the Navy. Again, great pace. He's got the ball out wide, put it wide and... Uh, Navy seem to be having a little bit of success down the wide wide areas. And it's Elliot Holmes again who's going to be taking the corner, taking this corner kick, his set piece. In fact, uh, Sending two out now. Sean Powell is over there as well. So it's going to be one of these two. I think Powell is going to... Uh, are they going to take the short or are they going to take it long? It's going long. 
and it goes is that for another up corner, into the or? air and the ball is still in play the army eventually get it clear that's nice bit of control work there from uh, Gary Hurd just come on of course as one of the three substitutions that has been made and it was another corner another corner for the Navy so their third corner in quick succession which Powell will take into the last what 20 minutes or is that yeah yep 70 just over 70 and a half minutes played here at Fratton Park and it is 2-1 now to the Royal Navy here corner comes in once again this time it's headed well clear by Andy Matthews out of play for a throw in which the Navy will take they'll be in no hurry no great hurry to take it And uh, referee Chris Arnell will be just um, having a few words to make sure that there's no time wasting going on. Gary Hurd is uh, over there to take the throw. Aims in the end for Thomas, for East Thomas, another throw to the Navy. Ball goes into that uh, north stand. So, what can the Navy do here? Can they extend their lead? Interesting if they keep going for the jugular and try and get another one, or do they uh, just keep the ball and what make, they've got. Make, the, make, the, make, the, uh, make the army run around and I work think, for the ball? I think it's too long yet for game management to come yeah, in here, Andy, I but uh, you could be, be, be right there. Just looking at the army bench at the moment, uh, Jimmy Blair, I wonder what other options he might have. Just seeing what uh, he might be able to do, Look, just checking his watch at the moment. Still loads of time for the army to get back into this, but it's the Navy pressing once more. Low cross comes in, dealt with by Matthews. And that'll be safely back from Pete Bradley, back to his goalkeeper, back to... McCormack goes long and that's a very confident header back from yeah, Callum Cox back to his goalkeeper as well. He's a good game hasn't he Callum? You know he's been steady there. I've been impressed with him yeah. yeah I've been well impressed with him. Yeah. But this game can turn at any moment all it needs is a bit of an error from um, one player or another. Well, and we saw that just before the, uh, the Navy scored didn't we? You know a little bit of an error and, and, and the army hit the post and then, uh, you know, the Navy go down the other end and, uh, and punish him with a set piece. But it looks to me like uh, Alfie Moulding is coming on. Another centre-back, another debutant in the senior team, captain the under-23 teams for the last two years. So he knows what it's like to lead. But interesting that uh, it looks like a central defender is coming on. Maybe uh, Jimmy Blair's got a plan to uh, really par players forward and uh, put the crosses in. Release Archie Matthews up top, I think, probably. The Navy also are going to make another change very shortly as well, looking down on the bench there. And coming on for them very shortly will be Cameron Quirk. I mentioned Fraser earlier on, one of the Golden Cap winners tonight. Ooh. That was a bit of a low challenge there. A high, well, studs were showing there. It's Gary Hurd's got a, a, might be in a bit of trouble here with that one. Yeah, I think he's, 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 yeah, he's reached for a yellow, hasn't he? I think that will be a, a yellow card. That Gary Hurd just going in a little bit late on, uh, was it Matty Evans? Yeah, I think the yellow card is being produced. Again, Jimmy's last throw of the dice, I think, you know, a double substitution. Yeah, not only Alfie Moulding coming on, but also Luke Greenway. These are all young players as well who've done well at the under-23 phase. And the man who's coming off for them is Matty Evans. And, he, and here's Fraser's lad coming on as well. Great. Yep. Yeah, Cameron Quirk coming on. Who's been, uh, he's based actually out of the British Embassy in Athens, is, uh, is Cam. And he's been playing um, local football in uh, 
in Greece as well while he's been out there. All right. Okay. So Luke Greenway comes on. Looks like a change of shape. Messages that are getting yep. on from uh, from Jimmy. So a change then for the army. And going off for them is uh, is Clay Bryant as well. So yeah, it looks like a three at the back now, doesn't it, for the army? Putting yeah. five up, pushing forward, trying to get this equaliser. Yeah. But uh, that goes to no avail. That's uh, meat and drink for the uh, the Royal Navy. Yeah. So it's uh, just a, a long diag punt, uh, hoping that, that Andrew Matthews can get his head on it. He did, and unfortunately just flicked it wide. So. Last subs another substitution. Yeah, so here is uh, another change then for the Navy. Dave, Dave Vincent, Vincent coming up. Off. And he's had a great game as Dave Vincent. Oh, no, he's got the no, wrong number. No, no, he's got the wrong number. So David Vincent is staying on for now. And who is going to come off? Actually, it is number six. It is going to be Reese Thomas, who's coming off a UCAF player. Reese Thomas is going to be replaced by Cameron Quirk. So Cam comes on a proud... I'm sure a proud uh, evening for Dad Fraser. He comes on, but great work today from Reese Thomas. UCAF quality, and he's had a good game for them. But the Navy just bolstering things up at the back by the looks. So McCormack then with the goal kick. And the charge is on from uh, Sol Roche to try and uh, get that, but uh, Army... Oh, dear. Did they deal with it? Well, Luke Kearney plays it out in the end. Good evening to Ginge White. Daryl White is watching this evening, the UCAF head coach. Sure you've been impressed with quite a few of the players you've been watching tonight, Ginge. Oh. Here come the no, Army, though, on the edge of the box. Opportunity for them, and it's just wide. Well, oh, another great chance. It was. Or was it a save? Looks like it's been a Was it a save well, or a deflection? Has it gone for a corner? It looks like yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But, uh, so good goalkeeping. Great effort from uh, Jamie Turner there. Of course, he scored against the RAF, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. He the, yeah took full advantage of the first goal. And that's a, an infringement oh. there. And ball so gone out. the ball has it gone out of play? Yeah, I think so he's given a goal kick, hasn't he? Yeah, you're right. Well, we have just over ten minutes of normal time to go, plus whatever is going to be added on at the end of this game. The Royal Navy leading the army by two goals to one here at Fratton Park. That's a lovely little touch forward. And a, a bit of a late one going in on uh, Elliot Holmes there. More challenges, rough challenges going in. The referee allows play to go on. Navy very unhappy with that challenge then on uh, yeah, I think Elliot it was Holmes. A bit of a late one out it here, was. wasn't it? <laughs> but good to allow the advantage to be played, I think. Here we go for the Navy then. Another long clearance. That's really good control. Yeah, well played. Yeah. Danny Kerr again. I think uh, if they were allowed to make nine substitutions, Danny Kerr would probably be the one who stayed on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, he's a, <laughs> a supreme athlete, isn't he? You know, he gets about... A so here we go then uh, with uh, Luke Kearney with the uh, goal kick. Takes it long. Nice control there from Jamie Turner again. Edge of the box. Here's Owen James. Army still looking for this equaliser if they can get it. Phillips has done well. Edges his way and that will yeah. be another corner. Forces the corner there. Another corner this time to the Army. It's 
Stevenson's up and Matthews up. Well, it certainly paid dividends for them in the first half. Yeah, I've, I've Will they reap the rewards again in the second from a set piece? Alfie Moulding up. It's a really good corner as well. Goalkeeper does well. It's hammered in there. And it's all sorts of melee going on. Oh, the referee allows scramble. play to go on. We're still going. The Navy have got a player down in the box. The referee will stop play. Well, I can't see who it is who's uh, down at the moment. Well, that was... Uh, a bit of a melee, it wasn't was it? It was a melee, yeah. I think that's the only way to describe it. It's a bit of a melee and uh, a bit of a scramble and uh, a few a few ricochets and shots. Well, but, it could have know. gone. It could have gone just about anywhere. Yeah, to be honest. but that's it, you know, it takes quite moral courage to put your body on the line. That's great defending by the Navy, isn't it? I think it's Sean Powell who's down there, who has really worked his socks off uh, this uh, this evening for the for the Navy. Number 11, he's uh, he's given absolutely everything tonight. There's a few instructions coming on from Elliot for Elliot Holmes. And you're t you say you're too old for the strain. Come on, the Royal Navy. <laughs> Fans really getting behind the I Navy. Think now. I, know, I think I know how you feel. <laughs> Anna Page says, well played, Clay Bryant. Come on, lads, there's still time to win this. This is Clay's mum. So it is uh, Sean Powell, who uh, seems to be OK. Plenty of banter going on in the stands behind us, by the way. You can yeah. hear it's quite an atmosphere here tonight. Yeah, Navy have got some uh, real support behind them, as, expect, as would have been expected. So different from uh, inter-services games that I've seen in the past when, you know, you've basically got two men and a dog watching. But uh, those of you who are watching at home, I hope that you're enjoying because we've got a really good attendance tonight on... That's a bit of a... How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what the referee's doing here because he's just going to put them... <laughs> well, that's where the play ended, obviously, uh, middle of the field, wasn't it? So, anyway, the Army... Still pressing, still looking for this equaliser. Powell gets the cross in. Oh, unlucky. RAF will get it cleared. The Navy. Did I say the RAF? Yeah. Freudian slip. <laughs> Danny Kerr. Here's Elliot Holmes and Kerr. Yeah, he's had Holmes for me is if we if we were selecting a player of the match, I think I'd be. Looking very seriously at Elliot Holmes yeah, for the Royal Navy. He's yeah, just, agreed. he's just, he's just the, uh, the way he plays. Here's Cameron Quirk. Ball goes out onto that far side. It's a challenge, fair challenge, says the referee on Gary Hurd. Still a chance for Elliot Holmes. Oh, Great save. What a save. Well, that was a brilliant save, but offside anyway. Yeah, offside, and I think is, uh, is that Stevenson down in the in the box? Yeah. It looks like uh, or Lewis Simmons, Lewis Simmons is yeah. down in the box of the army. But what a great save again from Luke, Luke Carney. But the, the flag had gone up for offside, so it wouldn't have counted. But again, you know, he wasn't to know, was he? No. No, great reaction save. And uh... Well, approaching the last yeah, five minutes of uh, normal time here. The Navy just holding see, on at the moment to a 2-1 see, lead. Just seeing the thumbs up from uh, Jimmy. No. Great oh. shots just wide, though, from uh, Andy Matthews. I think Andy Matthews is going to stay up front now by the looks of things. I saw the thumbs up from Jimmy that to uh, go and play up top. It's now Bournemouth four, Luton three. Oh wow, what a game that is! So down on, but not half as exciting as this one. No, it? absolutely <laughs> not. Chase is on then for Gary Hurd on that far yeah, side of the field, and he makes it. He's done really well to get there. Can he get the cross in though? He's looking for some support. 
He finds it in Dave Vincent with the cross. And that's just going to go out of play, I think. It has gone out of play. Won't bother the Navy too much. No. Nope. Last, uh, last, what's that, six minutes? We're down to the last five minutes. I think we are roughly, you know, roughly looking at that. Now all about game management for the Navy and, uh, you know, and uh, a little bit. Let's say very good evening to Ben Chambers. Everything on the kitchen sink Who is for the Army. Yeah, ben Chambers watching with the Royal Navy rugby team down there at HMS Rally, no doubt. As they prepare for the inter-services season coming up in Rugby Union. Never stops, does it? No. <laughs> Danny Kerr goes in. Army win the throw. Time against them at the moment. Lewis Simmons will have to go back. Throw then from Stevenson. Army throw again. Steve-O will take it. <laughs> Done well again. Given. Done well again, Elliot. Just got his body yeah. in there and made it difficult. Won the, won the, won the foul for his team. Yeah, it's been quite a tussle between uh, him and uh, Lewis, Lewis Simmons, Simmons tonight. Yeah, they they yeah. both had a great game, to be fair. Been a good battle down this side. Oh, it's been a terrific game. It yeah. really has. You know, a rip-roaring match between these two teams that you would expect because it wouldn't be Army Navy if it wasn't had a message actually coming up from uh, Stephen Perdo Conwell says I say the Army will win Army and Navy <laughs> enjoy the game well, we're certainly enjoying this one Chase is on for it Holmes going in for it, but the man first there is Andy Matthews. Here's Simmons, who's fouled. Will be a free kick to the Army. They're in a hurry to take it. Yeah. Maybe just holding it back again. I think Luke will take this. Carney then with the free kick into the box. Simmons goes for it, takes a deflection off his own player. And the Navy can then break now can on that far the, side. They can see the switch. Here's Gary Hurd. Space then for Elliott, and offside has, the offside flag has gone up. Yeah, it was against up. Sol Roche, I think, and also um, Elliot Holmes, both in an offside position. Yeah, just didn't quite quite see the right pass. Uh, it was Elliot Holmes that was speeding down this wing, and he was, uh, he was clean through. And here comes Luke Greenaway. Beats one man, beats two. Was there a hint of handball there? Mark Drysdale, referee says no. On we go. Game Just gets a little bit scrappy now and a little bit desperate. Now the army still pushing for this equaliser. Which possibly on the balance of play, Andy, they might feel they deserve at the moment, but it's... Uh, the Navy who hold the lead. Yeah, exactly. It's um, you know it's been a tight game. It's been a really tight game. Uh, a little bit of like, as, as we've said all, all through the game, contrasting styles. Um, but Sean on, Powell. On, on the balance of play, I think the the Navy have just had that little bit better quality. Had a couple of outstanding performances. People like the, the, the man on the ball at the minute, Elliot. I think he's been brilliant. You know, just kept him ticking, known when to play, when not to play. Jack McCormack. Just uh, holding it back. Decides to go long. Again, handing possession back to the army, but they've got to retrieve it from the deepest of positions. With Lewis Simmons back to his goalkeeper. And now wide onto that left hand side, then. Lovely through ball, flag has stayed down, and now it's gone up for offside. Oh, I'm not sure if he's offside from there. Well, Luke Greenway, I think it was, who just timed his run just a little bit too quickly. Yeah, obviously the uh, linesman's got a better, uh, better better view than we have at the, up in the gantry style, but uh, 
Seven, yeah. seven additional minutes. Yeah, Richard Graves and Steve Monks looking after the assistant referees and seven extra minutes to play, Andy. Well, yeah. we've seen leads change hands, equalisers in stoppage time. Lots of drama. <laughs> still, still seven minutes of drama to play. We have indeed. But it remains the Royal Navy 2, the Army, the British Army 1. And if memory serves me right, it's the Constantinople Cup, I think, that's on uh, up uh, tonight. As with all the competitions this year, a trophy on offer for every single one of them, <coughs> apart from the inter-services. Great challenge coming in. Done well. Meaty stuff. Yeah. And that was a foul, surely, on the... Well, the referee allows play to go on. It's, it's no, really it's good play from yeah. uh, Sol Roche there, but he was well challenged and badly challenged by Jamie Turner. Yeah, it was. And it was a foul, that will it? be a free kick. In fact, it's Alfie Moulding who was the guilty man there. And that's really the, the last thing that the Army can afford, is to give away free kicks like that. Yeah, silly free kick to give away, but um, like I say, it's uh, just what the, what the Navy need. They can just eat up the clock now and just uh, manage the game. So Elliot Holmes, scorer of that first goal for the Navy, is over the ball. He's just wondering what to do with it. I think there's uh, a little bit of uh, extra play going on here, a bit of holding for time. Cross comes in. Opportunity then for the Navy on the edge of the box then with Gary Hurd, who's done really well since he came on as a substitute. Yeah, recovered there because he was switched off actually. You know, the ball was played there and then he's uh, reacted to the second phase, but uh, recovered well. Jamie Tullock says seven minutes is enough time for an army brace. We'll see whether you're right. They're just looking for this equaliser just at this moment with Lewis oh, Simmons. Great ball. Oh. I'm afraid an offside flag for the army That's against uh, Owen James has not had too much opportunity since he came on to show his uh, skills I'm sure there's going to be a few extra seconds added on then by the referee for that George Emmett says here comes 3-1 well you never know do you we've still got to another five minutes to play of stoppage time Royal Navy 2 British Army won. Last moments of this thrilling inter-services game. We were hoping for a good match and we've not been disappointed. Here's Sol Roche, the younger of the, the two Roche brothers. Does well there. Navy will win the throw. With Sean Powell again doing well on this left-hand side. Yeah, I think right it's just side. a... Navy are being clever now, just game managing it. Just making sure that... The, Army have got to get this ball down the field. Route one stuff is going to be their way. Yeah. Nice control by yeah. uh, Owen, James, Owen yeah. James there. But good shielding that's of the it. ball yeah, by Army throw. Yeah, Pete Bradley. Yeah, he's Just getting a little bit heated there. He's getting a bit feisty, but he's yeah. uh, he's trying to stop stop the throw. He's he pushed him out of the way. Yeah, is that, is that Bradley off? Has, well, he, has he already been booked? Well, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't shown a yellow card, was he, before? He was spoken to a couple of times, uh, but he's now got the yellow card. I don't think he's had two yellows. No, it's a yellow card. It is a yellow. And he, he's quite rightly shown a card for that. That was deliberately holding the ball back. And a yellow card as well. And that's a red. Well, it's a, it's a, it's Jamie Turner. No, it isn't. I'm sorry, it's uh, Callum Cox. Is it? Callum Cox has been sent off. That's a red. Well, it must have been for something that he said to the referee, because he hadn't been booked before. He receives a red, straight red card. So the army are down 
to 10. And he's a very disappointed young man as he leaves the field. He's he's played well today. Yeah, he and he's well. blotted his copybook there with a sending off. It must have been for something he said. Yeah, I think so. Header goes up, the army then down to 10 men for these last few moments. Just a couple more minutes to go. Oh. Well, that could have gone just about anywhere from Owen James there. If that had flown into the net, that would have put the cat among the pigeons, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, just couldn't swivel in time, could he? But uh... Good evening to Jonathan Falk, who is watching tonight. John does a lot of, a lot of uh, great filming of uh, Army rugby. A lot of it you can see sometimes on Forces News. And uh, at the moment, the team he will be keep it, no doubt supporting it. the Army are trailing here. In these last few moments, the kick goes straight out of play from Luke Carney. I think we're into our what, last minute, last minute of... Uh, Added, added time. I think there'll be a little bit more because of all the a bit of yeah, a little bit of time wasting maybe that's been going on. Fanny Kerr has had a great game for them. Sol Roche still going, still got the ball, and he plays it outside to uh, Elliot Holmes. Holmes. Holding on to it, fending off the challenge at the moment that's coming in on him. He's being forced right back, though. Eventually, the army put it out. It's a navy ball. In fact, uh, it's going to be taken by Sean Powell. Navy just need to turn it now and just uh, run this clock. Just do nothing silly. Take the win, give themselves a cup final for next week. I've just had a bit of a telling off actually from uh, Natalie Jolly, so Natalie, my apologies. Supporting Jamie Turner tonight. Here come the army, that's going to be a, a free kick to the army. Yellow card. A, a late challenge from Cameron Quirk there, I think. Another another yellow card. Oh no, it's not Cameron. Sorry, it's uh, it's Dave Vincent who receives the yellow. We've had quite a few uh, cards brandished this evening by the referee. Yeah, but it's not been a it's it's been a, team. yeah it's been a niggly game, hasn't it? Rather than a you know it's, it's not been a nasty game. It's been a, a really fair, competitive. Well, it's it's a typical army navy battle, and here goes Sol Roche beats off a challenge. He's Still going, and he's not given that one up, and that will be a... And that's time. Not a corner, it is full time, and it's a victory for the Royal Navy by two goals to one. Well, it's been a terrific game, yeah. Andy. Absolutely, yeah, really, real, real good credit to both sides, because... Uh, you know, in the first 20 minutes, the Navy he sort of threatened to run away with it a little bit with their good football, and then uh, the, the Army grew into it, got themselves back in the game, and then, uh, you know, could have could have caused a little bit of an upset with hitting the post and nicked it 2-1, and then uh, game on for the Navy, and then they go down the other score, but that's what good sides do, you know. Yeah, and, Jack uh, McCormack was the, the... Obviously, he came off the, uh, the bench to score the goal for the Navy to give them the victory from that... Uh, corner as you say the uh, army had equalized also from a set piece and uh, a real quality goal to open the scoring this tonight in the first half from Elliot Holmes yeah yeah he's had a he's had a great game Elliot so uh, fair play to him he's uh, you know for, for me certainly I think we both discussed it on commentary for me he was the man of the match today I thought he looked really sharp and really bright well on the Royal Navy great game says Yvonne Powell and uh, Diffin Pierce watching good evening to you Diffin I'm sure you'd have been very proud of some of those UCAF players who've uh, been on show tonight. And Shelley Derbyshire, good game, good game to watch. Yeah, I think we'll all agree with you that. And uh, 
Lots of applause coming from the players for the support tonight because it, I think I don't think I've seen such great support as I've, I've seen this evening, Andy. Yeah, a, and, it, it, a, and it makes such a difference, doesn't it? it? Yes, it does. Um, you know, it's over a thousand, well, sixteen hundred people here, so uh, just shows the interest and uh, passion for inter-service football. And uh, fair play to the Army and the Navy for putting on a, a really good footballing spectacle and I hope uh, all the viewers online as well enjoyed it. Well, well done to Portsmouth Football Club as well because uh, uh, they've uh, created a great atmosphere for everyone to enjoy tonight. Service football at its very, very best. And of course, Andy, now, uh, well, it's all down to your boys and uh, the Navy to meet next week. Yes, at, well, uh, at Shrewsbury. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a challenge. You know, we know what we're up against now, and uh, you know, we'll do our uh, certainly do our best to uh, to retain the title. So, okay. Uh, well, let's uh, go on pitch side, shall we? Where Kath Brazier uh, is with uh, the uh, Royal Navy captain Danny Kerr. I'm joined by the Royal Navy captain, Danny Kerr. Wow, I mean, I want to say breathtaking. It was fiery out there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um, in its services game. Uh, that's what it's like. We've we've not had a game like that all season, and, and they, I doubt they have, apart from maybe the RAF last week, but it is, it's fiery fixtures, and sometimes football goes out the window a little bit, especially during spells during the game, and, and that's pretty much how it probably went today as well. I mean, you came out of the blocks, the Royal Navy. I think, you know, you definitely had a better start than the Army, and first goal within 12 minutes. Um, is there almost sort of, you know, you don't want heads to go up too high at that point because you've still got a you know, long way to go? Yeah, I mean, football games, you're playing spells. We knew the first 15 would be a bit of a whirlwind and it's who could settle down the quickest. I, th I, think, I think it was pr pretty even, to be fair. I thought we might have had more of the ball to start with, but I think they, they, they matched us. It, it was good. Um, they did, and they did in, in I mean, tempers flared, you know, and as you said, it's in services football, and we, we've come to expect that. But your goals were, you know, the Navy goals and the Army goal, all superb, really elite goals. Yeah, the first goal from, from Els was, he, he could put the ball in the back of the net, he, he's calm, side footer into there, wish I'd have done that a couple of times. And then and then the second goal, made up for Jack McCormack, it's his first senior in services game, and got a, got a goal, we were winning goal, so I made up for him. I know you'll be enjoying this win tonight, but REF final, you know, next week. Um, heads on tomorrow morning and looking towards that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a cup final for, for us and them, and I'm sure both sides are looking looking forward to it. We'll recover and, and maybe enjoy tonight a little bit, and then and then we'll be, be ready to go come Sunday and, and into the REF game. We'll see you then, Danny. Go and enjoy your side. Sure, Cheers. Right, thank you. Well, time for the presentations then. Danny Kerr, very happy there, talking to Kath Brazier. The officials receiving their rewards for excellent work tonight, certainly brandishing a few cards. Chris Arnell had his work cut out this evening with Flight Lieutenant Richard Graves and Flight Sergeant Steve Monks and the fourth official this evening, Martin Mitchell. So time now then for the, the player of the match. And let's see who that's going to be presented to, Andy, because... Uh, Oh. John Powell for the well, Army. Oh, sorry, for the Navy. Navy's, yeah, the Navy's uh, Sean Powell. I thought he had a terrific game. There were quite a few contenders maybe for that award, but... Uh, yeah, there was there was contenders all over the pitch. Yeah. Like you say, Sean Powell, I thought Elliot uh, had a great game. I thought the uh, uh, Callum Co Cox had a good game for the Army at right back, you know. So, yeah, lots of contenders. Yeah, great game. Both sets of players being roundly applauded by those people who have stayed here. And so the Royal Navy then take the trophy for tonight. And Danny Kerr proudly receiving the cup and wa waves it above his head. It's another piece of silverware to add to the collection. Disappointment for the Army. They've uh, played two and lost two. In fact, disappointment, of course, for the Army women as well. They've lost to their two games as well. But a lot of young players coming into the Army team 
tonight, Andy, and they will certainly have learned a lot from uh, this match and indeed the game against your boys uh, last week. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, every service goes through a transition. Um, you know, we had it a couple of years ago and then uh, the Navy as well a couple of years ago. And, uh, I, I, you know, with all due respect to the Army, I think they're going through that transition. They lost a lot of good players and, uh, you know, they're now redeveloping. Jimmy's Jimmy's doing well with the, with the squad. They've, they've gone to some fantastic places. They went to Australia and that as a, as a whole organisation with the masters and the, and the ladies and the you know and these things take time you know uh, developing your players bedding them in getting time together with detachments etc etc so you know unfortunately for the army it's just not the, quite their time at the minute but um, you know I, I'm sure they'll re re galvanize and uh, come back stronger next year Andy, thanks very much indeed. Celebration time for the Navy there. And they're the winners here at Fratton Park this evening. My huge thanks to Andy Kutcher, who's joined us tonight as co-commentator. Uh, you'll be pitch side, of course, next week at Shrewsbury uh, when the Royal Navy are visiting the Royal Air Force for their home fixture to decide this season's Inter-Services Championship. But from me, John Knighton, Andy and the rest of our team here at uh, Portsmouth this evening and indeed the rest of our team at uh, Forces News, it's a very good night. Thanks indeed for watching. Yeah.